<laughs> we are back for another episode of Uncut and Unfiltered. And today we have got a very special guest in the studio with us. Normally we're joined by Posh Gotch. Unfortunately, he is off gallivanting around doing all sorts of other whiskey, wonderful things. Uh, but today we are joined instead by the wonderful global ambassador for spirits at Berry Brothers and Rudd. Joe, welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you, sir? I'm very well, thank you very well. Thank you very much for having me down. Thank you so much for coming down. <laughs> we really appreciate it. We're going to tuck in in a second. Uh, but as always, joined by the Dram Pirate, Stevie. How are you, sir? I'm good, mate. I'm very excited. You know a little bit more about what's coming today than I do, because yes. it wasn't long ago that you actually went up to Berries with Ian, with Posh Scotch. Yep for an episode of the Enthusiast series, which if you haven't watched, guys, you can head over to the Whiskey Baron YouTube channel and you can watch Ian's Enthusiast series there. He's done loads of really cool and exciting things, but Berries is kind of the first long form content that he's produced. And Joe, you very kindly brought him around Berries, showcasing all sorts of crazy, wonderful things from the very expansive history that you guys have there through to the spirits that you've got and you know the spirits that are coming and i think that's kind of what you brought us today right yeah yeah so i uh, i thought we were talk probably good looking in the future with berries you end up talking so much about the past that you For sure. forget that we do actually have stuff coming out to talk about stuff. yeah um so yeah so uh today i thought I'd bring you a first look um for our uh, uk spring release our uh, our latest release of uh seven casks um so i brought six samples down for us to uh Amazing. to try um, so this hasn't been released yet nope nope this, when so, is this going to be coming out then? so this comes out on 19th of march 19th of march all right well hopefully we will uh, make sure that we release it just in time maybe just prior to it coming out or just after it's been released Probably just after we'll make sure that we uh, collaborate with you guys mm -hmm. and the various mm -hmm. teams to make sure that you're happy uh but guys either this is just about to come out or it's just dropped <laughs> uh so all of the whiskies that we're being very kindly uh being shared with today it, they're going to be out for you guys now to have a little look at so keep your eyes open um is this the first time anyone outside the company has had to try that uh yes i think maybe a couple of people in the trade How exciting. But, you know wow. i thought you know what <laughs> what an honor what a privilege coming down after you came to our home i thought i'd bring something a little bit special well yeah what and a also treat. This uh, this tasting box has been sat at home for the last ten days. I've been trying to find a good excuse to crack to into break it. it out. Well, I yeah. have to say, I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna steal it from in front of you there because it was the first thing I said when I came into the studio. Wow, what a tasting box! And for all of you guys at home, hopefully you can see, it is a beautiful tasting set there. Uh, really, really wonderful display piece. And again, you know, you talk about miniatures, get tasting bits and pieces. Sometimes they can come fairly bland sort of displays and not much care given. This is a really wonderful gift. So do you <laughs> sell a lot of tasting sets? So no, these are, at the moment, these are created uh, for people like yourselves. PR uh, we purposes. send these out okay. to people in the trade. Okay. Um, so yeah, so we split a couple of bottles. Um, our releases are split from international and UK sort of casks. So these tasting packs get sent out. Uh, we are hoping to do something with these a little bit in the future. Oh, I think you I'm, definitely should. They're yeah. Incredibly beautiful. I'm not going to overpromise. There's a person in our office called sure. Shirley Ann who have even saying this, she probably wants to murder me. She hasn't even heard it yet. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> if, we, if we can use these miniature bottles, it would be amazing. Um, yeah, listen, yeah. they're beautiful. But fair enough. The miniatures aren't available for you guys at home just yet. But if it's something that you'd like to see, drop it in the comments and maybe we'll be able to convince Shirley Ann, <laughs> that that's something that you guys should do moving forward. I'm just going to say, I'm really sorry, Shirley Ann. <laughs> it's all my fault. You can blame me. It's absolutely fine. I'll take the heat on that one. But cool. Okay. So, a lineup of spring releases that are yet to come out. Ooh. Where would you like to start, Joe? So I think uh, we need to start with our small batch. Um, so basically the whole idea of the spring release is that we choose our casks that match the season that's happening outside the door. Okay. Uh, so with spring, we're looking for stuff that's bring, beginning to bring some fruits in there, okay. maybe a bit earthier, bring a bit of peat in there, but nothing heavy. Uh, maybe step away from your, your PX finishes that we had in our winter release. Okay. Um, so our first one is our small batch, Glen Lossy. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to move this quickly so I can grab the bottle. I love the fact that you guys are focused on creating something that's a little bit special, a little bit sort of thought out based on the time of year. That's wonderful. Really, really cool. Seasonal. Very seasonal. seasonal. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, yeah. I think it's not something that a lot of people would necessarily focus on. And again, Berry's obviously such an expansive history. But as you say, releasing such wonderful things on such a regular basis nowadays, it's great that you have the capabilities to do those seasonal releases and keep stuff ticking out that is suitable based on the time of year. Um, I think it, 
it makes a big difference, certainly for a drinker like myself, who's not looking for the same thing time and time again. I'm always looking for something a little bit different, uh, which is one reason why I love independent bottlings. I know we had a, a lot of discussion recently with people in the comments about IBs versus OBs and where to start. I think it was the Gordon and McPhail episode. Lots mm. of people were pitching in as to where they sort of got involved within their whiskey journey. I think most people start off with OBs, it seems. I didn't personally. Uh, but then as they sort of become a little bit more engaged and experimental and and enthusiastic i suppose they're getting involved in uh, in in ibs and i think it's great that you guys are putting out that stuff based on yeah the season at hand and and the flavors that maybe you're enjoying you know from a food point of view or or elsewhere so really cool i love it okay so yeah. glenn lossy glenn lossy uh so this is a, a hog's head uh, so these are actually three casks married together. Okay. Uh, so most of our releases are single cask, um, like quite a lot of IBs. Yep. Um, but we always like to sort of, you know, with our releases, we always like to sort of choose one distillery that is less about the actual individual character of that cask okay. and more about sort of showing the distillery, really. Um, and we normally choose distilleries that you don't really see um, as bottling. Glenn Lossy very much one of those ones for sure it goes so much into the Diageo's blends and other blends and I just think it's a great sort of start distillery uh, really light really delicate sort of fruity but a lovely texture so I just thought it would be a nice place to start sounds like a wonderful um, place yeah. to start you've got my uh, taste buds tingling already I'm thirsty yeah. <laughs> I am more interested in the fact that you started with IBs rather than OBs as your whiskey journey that's yeah, quite I unique mean, I think uh, I mean when I started I say I started I suppose Johnny Walker and, and yep. the easy ones to grab but when when I properly started getting into whiskey, it was when I worked in the industry. Mm. Uh, and so I think, yeah, I started off with IBs because it really allowed me to explore different cask types, different flavor profiles, and really get involved as opposed to just looking at a standard core release from a certain distillery and, oh, I like that or I don't like that. Mm. It really allowed me to get involved and start understanding the different components that were going in. So liquid, cask type, age, ABV as well. Yeah. I think a lot of the OBs can be bottled at a flat 40, 43, 46%, whereas the higher strength really allowed me to get involved and start understanding where those different flavors would either push through or start dropping off adding more to myself and and, and sort of messing around so yeah ibs for me were definitely a, a big part of my sort of journey to begin with uh, and equally something that really taught me a lot was my infinity bottle yeah within my first year of working in the industry blending whiskies and playing around with that really allowed me to understand flavors and how they work and what works with what and, and yeah i suppose brought me that much further along my journey that much quicker you know so yeah definitely seemingly so anyway i thought i was maybe one of the normal <laughs> ones but abnormal as usual yeah. <laughs> people in the glenn uh, the sorry no the gordon mcphail episode did comment all saying would never start with ibs yeah. uh, and people who are kind of three or five years along their journeys now just getting into ibs so hopefully this will be a good episode for anyone who commented on the gordon mcphail episode uh, and maybe was a bit unsure about independent bottlings i think you uh you'd be You'd be struggling to find one that you'd go wrong with in the berries lineup. Oh. You guys are seriously cool <laughs> bottlers. Yeah, you know you've been doing, doing it for a while. <laughs> yeah. Doing it long enough, right? <laughs> but at this point, so you don't we, have the yeah. experience. We've uh, been doing it for about two centuries. So, sure? yeah, hopefully we're finding our feet with this. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Love to be able to tell you when we officially started, but, um, you know, we sadly destroyed all our records in a fire in about 1944. So, for sure. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah. What a shame. Yeah. Oh, so should, should we, we uh, should we? Yeah. Uh... Oh. Thank. No, I haven't yet, mate. Thank you very much. Your, uh, your special. I'm going to use my A. Williams glass, but I'm not going to pour it all over myself trying to see the bottom to <laughs> check who it was made by today. <laughs> Managed to do that whilst we were last filming there, Joe. It was uh, good luck. Oh, no. Spilling whiskey all over your lap <laughs> to win. No, things are, I'm just going to get my keys out because I've cut my nails and I can't open this. So, uh... oh, if you need a, uh, well, there's like a little corkscrew. Oh, is that Where is it gone? Over there somewhere. Uh... Or is it on the uh, the shelf where the glasses are at the bottom, maybe? It's a trial. So he got it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I feel like I need to sort of get this moving. I feel hampered, hampering myself there. <laughs> so, Stevie, did you try much of the stuff whilst you were uh, over at Berries, or you were just busy buying the camera, weren't you? I As wanted per to. Usual. Actually, do you know what? Um, Joe very kindly offered me a uh, drop of the Glen Elgin that oh, okay. we were tasting, wasn't it? With uh, Glen Grant. Glen Grant, sorry. Okay, cool. Um, and uh, I wasn't, I wasn't feeling my best that day. 
It was oh, okay. probably the only time I've did turned down say, a dram. You said no. Wow, okay. I did, fair enough, yeah, fair yeah. Enough. I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah. However, I spent a lot of time looking at some seriously uh, delicious mouth-watering liquids that day. In the day. shop. In the shop, in the, in the cellars. Oh, don't. I and uh, so, rare things, so I'm very... Sure. Very excited. So thank well, you. If I, if I remember that, I would have brought you a little, a oh, little don't drop worry. of it. I'll don't make worry. Sure. Still got that bottle. <laughs> okay. I almost lost it in my cupboard. Yeah. So Glen Lossy, and you're saying this is a blend of three just standard bourbon so, hogsheads. St standard hogsheads, yeah. Okay, cool. So yeah, so a small batch are normally, depending on the cast type, normally two to four casts married together. So very much a small batch. Yeah. Um, yeah, we really want to just to sort of choose a liquid that shows the character of the distillery. Yeah. Um, highlighting the great work they do, um, you know, blending out some of those unique characters that you get from the individual cast that we'll talk about. Um, but yeah, and just sort of just trying some really delicious liquid. And I think this one is is perfect as sort of one of those sort of workhorses of Northern Speyside. Absolutely. What's the strength on this? Sorry, if you don't mind. Uh, so this is 46. Okay, so wow. watered down. So watered down, yeah. Really uh, wonderfully <laughs> done, though. I would have said in the 50s. I w so I think it's wonderful and gentle, but it tastes like a... Uh, sorry, is there an age statement on this? Uh, there is. Uh, so this is... I'm just going to move this again. I'll bring this up. <laughs> Uh, so, so this one is uh, distilled uh, 2013, okay, and it was bottled, I believe, sort of late December uh, time. Um, okay. So yeah, so probably ten, ten, ten years, years old. old. Ten, ten, ten years ten. old or thereabouts. Okay, yeah. cool. I'm going to get my maths right this time round. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. We've got loads of people keen eyes, keen eyes at home. So yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> Very observant. But this is the interesting thing. You guys don't normally put an age statement on your bottles. Then. No, no. So, so what, it's not a focus. So what we normally do uh, is we uh, we put the year of distilling yep. um, and then we put the bottling year. Um, it's something that we have always done. Um, because we think it's just one of those ones. It's key. Uh, it's key information that you really want to share. Um, it's also along the line of what the wine industry do. Yeah. Uh, wine industry don't normally put sort of the age how sort of the age of how long the wine's aged for. Uh, they normally put it's, just, it's, just sort of you know the vintages and then the year it was bottled, yeah. either out of cask or sort of finally bottled. So it just follows along sort of with our wine side of our of our business. For sure, um, I like that. Yeah. Nice consistency across yeah. the board. One this issue is... is that maths can be done wrong. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Well, listen, it's, yeah. uh, so long as it's not on the monthly, it doesn't matter. It's just us adding up. <laughs> <laughs> wrong isn't it so that's grand this is really really wonderful glenn lussie though and i have to say the fact that it has been watered down to 46 i think it's interesting you think it's tastes up in the 50s i think it tastes like a really wonderful cask strength example of something that's been aged for actually a bit longer mm. than 10 years it, mm. it tastes like something that's maybe 15 18 20 years old i think you get those wonderful kind of soft fruits mm -hmm. but it's a really wonderful creamy mouth texture and just some wonderful oak spice and i think that's what's surprising to me that it has been watered down to 46 obviously done very well and with good intention we say it so many times in the podcast i am always happy to slate a bottler when it's watered down to 48 46 43 40 percent just for the sake clearly yep. of let's get some more bottles on the shelves and make some more money but when it works at 40 percent or 46 whatever it is fair fucking play you know and i think that this works really really nicely you talk about spring releases and it being that sort of time of year this is exactly what i want in my glass at this yeah. time of year it's soft it's gentle it's fruity it's well-rounded and it's elegant which is glenn lossy you know yeah. right it's yeah. exactly that you've hit the nail on the head it's really really lovely I also think the thing I love about Glen Lossy is it's all of those things, but it still has a lovely texture to it. Mm. Uh, one of the things that we've always looked for as a bottler is there are three elements. I'm sure I've, I've mentioned before on the, uh, the enthusiast thing, uh, the enthusiast uh, sort of channel um, was that we look for balance, texture and, uh, and complexity. Right. And it really does. I think this hits all three of those because, as you said, it's got that lovely wood smoke. It's not overpowering. Yeah. Um, it's got a lovely sort of longevity of flavour and texture. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, I think it's an excellent example. It's of wonderfully woven. Yeah. All mm -hmm. of those things. You just... talk about texture as well. To me, it's quite creamy on the forefront, but mm -hmm. the tannins kind of take over and that wood spice is not as stringent, I wouldn't say, but slightly drying on the back end. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a 
normally you don't see it so much in whiskies. You get one mouth texture, or yeah. one mouth feel throughout and lots of different flavors perhaps, but I'm kind of getting a, a change in mouth texture yeah. from that creamy beginning to then that sort of slightly more, I don't want to say the word astringent is in my head. It's not It's not that much though. It's very soft and very gentle, but just drying, drying wonderful yeah. Yeah. oak spice on the end. Really well balanced, yeah. really, really except For 10 years old, I'm actually, I'm blown away. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Out of interest, you bought these hogsheads. Were they just the standard hogsheads bought from Diageo, or did you put these into your own casks yourselves? These ones, I think we bought these. We bought uh, sort of some sister casks of these, and I think they came in the wood that we just got them in. Really, really um, interesting. Yeah. Because again, when you're looking at a big conglomerate like Diageo, who are producing multiple millions of liters per annum, uh, obviously they release certain amounts of stock into the open market for bottlers like berries and us over at the Whiskey Baron, which is amazing to have that privilege of getting really great brands brands like Glen Lossy, uh, you know, under the berry's name. Um, sometimes though, when you're looking at so many multiple millions of liters, yeah. the casks can't always be amazing. No. And often the stuff that they'll release onto the market may not be some of their best stuff. You no, know? no, you're never going to give your prize pony away, are you? know you? what I mean? And <laughs> yeah, it's understandable. You can't yeah. slate them for it. But, yeah. you know, it does happen sometimes where you get hold of some stock from big conglomerates like the Agio, And if it's not been sort of re-wrapped or taken care of in a different way and sort of yeah. had the independent bottler put their own spin on it, sometimes it can come across a little bit bland. This is not bland. This is anything but bland. Yeah, this is exceptional <laughs> Glen Lossy. Really, really wonderful. And it kind of, to your sort of early point, it's wonderful to see Glen Lossy shine in such a way because normally it would just be a component part of a blend that people yeah. don't really hear about, don't really know about. And when it's like this, yeah. it's really impressive. It's lovely. Joe, where are we at price point? Do you know? Test so this one, I uh, do know. Hang on. No, no he's rush. counting no his rush. shekels already. He's yeah, trying to figure out, can I buy a bottle? <laughs> It'd be really interesting to know where this is at. It's, right, yeah, 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 yeah. What are you thinking? You said it was kind of a little bit strong on the forefront. You, so, yeah, there was there was almost like it was like there was a lot of alcohol present for me. Okay. You know, that may be the wood drying there kind of because it, you know, I feel like power, they can be quite parallel sometimes for me. That kind okay. of strong alcohol and that kind of wood drying. Um I wouldn't have guessed this, yeah, down at in, in the at 46, did you say? Yeah. Yeah, 46 you know, Yeah, I would have said around 50, okay. or just over. But, uh, and that's a compliment. But you think yeah. it sits well at that strength and you think it's showing off yeah. its character. I mean, listen, we've all yeah. had whiskeys at 46% and they've been like water, right? right. So it's yeah. amazing that the, the liquid here takes the water so well. Yeah, um, definitely. So fair play. Price point? So 70 pounds. Okay. 70 pounds for okay. a 10-year-old. Yeah. Maybe a 10-year-old. In and around a 10-year-old. Yeah. Yeah. Lassie. Pretty fucking reasonable. Very cool. Very cool. I like yeah. it. It's I definitely like kept, it his, kept his structure very well. It has. That's exactly it. Yeah. It's kept its structure really, really nicely. It's a wonderful expression. I think it's... Um, yeah, for ten year old Glen Lossy, I think it's one of the better ones that I've had, to be honest. Like high price. Yeah. Yeah. And high this price. is it. Like I say, sometimes you get IB's bottling stuff that's clearly straight out of mm. Diageo or Perno or White Mackay and they have not done anything to it. And it's just like, why would I buy this over the distillery version? Or why would I, you know, why why do I want this? Mm. I know exactly why I want this. It's delicious. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's banging. Really, really lovely. Cool. Sure. What a great start. What a beautiful really good start. start. Yeah. Really good start. What do we have next, Joe? So what do we have next? We are moving on to actually... There are so many great whiskeys here to choose from. I, I don't know if we'll get through all of them today. Have you, I mean, have I'm, you... I'm up for the challenge, <laughs> but I don't know. Have you seen the Craigie? I... I've oh, seen the Craig the, yeah. here. So guys, obviously, if you're watching at home, uh, Joe has very kindly bought us some full bottles just so you guys can see how these will be presented uh, when they are released. Uh, we have got a High Coast 2012, which is from Sweden. Uh, we've got a Knock Do 2012 and Kregaliki, the bad boy of Speyside, as you all know, one of my absolute favorites. I'm still really looking forward to doing a Kregaliki episode. It's going to be so <laughs> fucking cool. Um, but yeah. I'm very, we'll definitely have, if the Craig Allicke is in. Oh, it, I mean, it is. We're trying, one, I insist, we're trying that one at least. I mean, this um, is the one, that's the one that I've been waiting to try as you're well. Most excited yeah. about? Okay, I was, uh, I was writing some of the tasting notes for these and I was not given the Craig Allicke. And I'm like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us then, Joe, as you're yeah. opening that next one there, a little bit about your role because you're the global ambassador for spirits at, at, at Berries. What does that entail? What's your, what's your day to day looking like other than coming around to, <laughs> 
plebeians like us and sharing your wonderful whiskies and, and shouting about the Barry's name, what is it that your sort of main responsibilities entail? So my main role is basically I am the face of the brand. Um, I uh, oh, good catch. <laughs> I'm very good at saving bottles that are tipped over. Don't worry. That is a good underrated skill. Yeah. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. So I basically I'm the face of the brand. Um, I do a lot of educational pieces, working with um, our trade partners around the world, uh, with our sales team in the UK. Okay. Uh, so I do a lot of sort of education teaching people about whiskey, about sort of how to enjoy, how to drink, how to analyze whiskey. Um, cool. Because that is, I think, sort of just one of the delights of working in this industry. Um, and then I do a lot of sort of master classes, tastings, going through our bottlings. Okay. Um, do a lot of, as sort of, as you've seen, do a lot of history tours. A little, quite a large part of my uh, my job is tour guide and uh, historian, which uh, is okay. a part I love, absolutely love. Yeah, I was going to say, it comes yeah. across in that enthusiast <laughs> series episode. You are very well versed in the history of, uh, of Perry. It's, it's so interesting to hear about you know as you said you've got such a depth of history and i think that that's something that so many people aspire to now you know you can tell your story moving forward but so few people have literally hundreds of years going backwards yeah. wow i mean what a privilege and what an honor to be able to share those stories so you must really love your job i yeah <laughs> absolutely love it i've been working for berries for five years this year um and so the last nine months, I've been officially doing this role. But really, uh, before then, I was I was doing a lot of tastings, a lot of learning my learning my trade. Really working with my predecessor, okay. uh, Ronnie Cox, okay. who uh, is a name some of you may know. Absolutely, um, if you don't was, know Ronnie Cox, yeah. you know what are you doing? <laughs> so yeah, so uh, basically, I uh, I started. I met him for the first time at the whiskey show when I was um, two weeks into a role okay. in 2019. And I went, I don't know who this guy is, but I'm holding on to his coattails because I want whatever he has. <laughs> For sure. Um, and yeah, so learning a lot from him. Um, and then when he retired, the company decided they actually wanted an official global brand ambassador. So, oh, so I, Barry didn't have one before that no, point? No. Wow. So Ronnie Cox was probably de facto sure. brand ambassador, but he was never given, he was never had the title. Okay. Um, his, his job was basically to be Ronnie Cox. Yeah. Um. He he sort of you know sit there and sort of charm a room and you know be that. Um. Uh, but there were, he was never a brand ambassador. He never sort of worked on you know sort of the the more modern style of like brand ambassador where we we build brands and sort of we talk to consumers and look at doing different things. So what a privilege for you being the first global brand yeah. ambassador for Berries. That's yeah. That's awesome, right? Yeah. Very it was. Cool quite yeah it was quite an honor uh you know we've got a global brand ambassador who looks after number three gin right. our gin brand but we've never had one that officially does our, our whiskies and rums um so what yeah. a shame mate hard job i know yeah i know, know. So, someone had to do it <laughs> good on you for taking it on joe well done yourself I mean, we, we already appreciate the hard work that you're doing Fair I'm glad enough. someone does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so we've moved on to the second round of the day, which for everyone at home is a knock do, still 2012 and bottled 2023. So we're looking at a 10, maybe an 11 year old whiskey. Uh, it's a single cask hogshead, is that right? Yep. Cool. Uh, and I'm going to assume that this is a cask strength. It's yes. 58.4. Yeah. So a little bit stronger. Out of interest, what was the thought behind leaving this one cask strength versus, for example, the Glen Lossy, which we've watered down? So our single casks are always at cask strength. Cool. Um, it's only our sort of, you know, our core range, our classic range, or our small batch, which we bring down. Okay. Um, anything above that um, in this sort of this release, we always do single casks. What we want to do is we want to bottle sort of quite unique expressions of distilleries. Right. Um, and we really believe that they really should shine through at car strength because you really keep the character of the distillery what they've done uh people have spent a lot of time working on fermentation sort of distillation ma maturation of these casks as well as our team doing the maturation and we really feel like we want to keep that sort of unique fingerprint of the cask okay. there uh so sometimes with this one we put it uh, into a cask and we keep it just at the tradition the original cask sometimes we do finishing which we'll get onto in a bit but cool. really we want to just show the sort of uniqueness of the character um cool. and i think this expression the reason why i've moved on to this one next is because it really shows 
what it is to keep it at car strength. Not do, I don't think you really see it in independent bottlers. I don't think I've seen one, um, even though I haven't researched that much. So, Not do? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, it's one that you don't see very often, no, full stop, no. right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, they do have a brand. They have um, Anok these days, which yeah. is, is going really well, doing some delicious whiskey. But this, I think, shows what that distillery does. It's kind of creates quite a meaty sort of space side it's almost i think this is a little bit like craig ellicky's younger brother yeah, uh, yeah small yeah. two still uh two still distillery at, and i just think it's just instantly on the nose you already get some little bit of salt for a little bit of got character that you would probably lose if you bring it down with a bit of water definitely and i think it just kind of gives it some texture and some interest here i think this is yeah one of the one of the standout of our sort of of our release just on a on a traditional cask Definitely. rather than a finish and, and what, you've absolutely hit the nail on the head what i'm really enjoying this here from this here you know from nosing it and from my first couple of sups is you're right not do does tend to have that slightly more bulgy richer rounder i've never described it as that myself mm. but verging on meaty character yeah. you're absolutely right uh and Finishing it could start complementing that. Watering it down could definitely wash that away. But I think what's wonderful here, you know, we talked about, you know, the potential for sort of standardized casks coming straight from the distillery sometimes to not be all that sort of impactful. And I don't think that this is. The cask really hasn't done a huge amount to the spirit. What's wonderful about that is you've got the distillate just shining through for what it is. The cask maybe has just allowed it to tame slightly over the 10 or 11 years, whatever it's been that it's been maturing, but it hasn't really added, I wouldn't say, a huge amount of vanillins, huge yeah. amount of flavor. You don't get toffee or anything like that. It's actually quite stripped back and, and I don't want to say basic in the best yeah. way do you know what i mean for sure for it's sure really, it's really almost amazing. like and this is this is in no way um uh, you know negative at all because it's lovely but it's almost got that kind of cleric kind of element to mm -hmm. it coming through you know that really raw you know straight off the still unrefined beautiful unrefined yeah. spirit in there you know yeah um i completely agree but the good thing is is the i agree with you 100 percent. the difference is and i think where people maybe would think oh come on saying like cleric it's not harsh. No, it's no. unrefined, but, but the had, alcohol sits nicely in the glass. We've all had cleric that is hasn't been harsh. It's almost like bottle of that now. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's sure. delicious, right? Definitely, definitely. So, and that's why I'm saying it's not like a you know I'm not being negative about it. It's, no, it's no, no. Listen, I definitely it, hear you. you know? I hear you. 100%. And I think back to Joe's point it is you you're bringing that distillery character through there, and you can really, really taste that. Um, I, can't, yeah. I can't say I've actually really tried. I think I've only tried the Anarch. Yeah, Once. I think me too. Ooh. Literally. In path and it's something that I need to give a little bit more time folks to. Do is it is it an aged expression? Yes, they have now got some aged expressions. Yeah. Uh yeah, eight, ten and, and twelve. 12 yeah, maybe I was 15 gonna say there? ten and twelve, I As think well? I've seen. Yeah, I, but... I sort of yeah, because I think I'd only tried it once at a whiskey festival. So when I saw this was coming out, I sort of ran out to try and find a couple of bottles to try. Compare and contrast. Yeah, because yeah, they, they do have, they still kind of keep a little bit of that texture. Um, they lose some of this. has got quite uh, quite a lovely warmth at the end of it, I think, and sort of, you know, bringing it down to bottling strength. I can't for life. Yeah, there's a very light is. chili. Yeah, there, there is a light chili. Yeah, no, it's, it's um, a little bit and it's, it's quite uplifting at the end to sort of, I think it gives longevity to the finish. So um, sorry, is Anarch, uh, is it the same same spirit? Same same, same one. So yeah, yeah. Uh, so Nocdu is the uh, the name of the distillery. Right. Um, it's been shut down more times, I think, than most because it's tiny and okay. it's all, every time there's a problem, it seems to be closed and reopened. Sure. Um, it was bought by um, In The House in the late 80s. Um, and by the same time, uh, uh, what's the other one? Knock, knock and Do was being opened. And I think they were worried about two distilleries having a very similar name and getting confused. So they named it Anok, which I believe is named is the hill that overlooks okay. uh, Knock Do. Um, I believe, don't hold me on that. Um, all I know is that one of my, my our Scottish team member, her dog is called um, Anok after the whiskey. She loves it that much. <laughs> oh, it sounds <laughs> That's really Shout, out, okay. shout out to Chris there. <laughs> High <laughs> praise, dog. I love it. Okay, very cool. Um, but yeah, so, so they, they kind of just kind of had a, a brand name just sure. to sort of separate it yeah um but yeah. yeah and can you usually name knock do knock do or is yeah. it kind of yeah it is it's yep. not yeah yeah but it's not one of not these... one that's readily available though no, no not no. one that you'd be able to buy no not 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 that easily for um, sure for sure 
It's I have I have tried to find the uh, the path of this. I've uh, yeah, I've looked at our records to try and find the path of how this ended up with us and I couldn't find it. Right. So it's either come through someone somewhere separately or, you know, being being given to us very early on and the things have been lost. But yeah, it's For been sure. quite I'm glad it has come to us. An accident to delivery. Yeah. <laughs> and again, you know, we talk about seasonal releases. This is very different to the Glen Lossy, which is light mm. and fruity and easy going and obviously been brought down to a wonderful 46%. I can see that on a slightly brighter day. Mm. Whereas this, you know, still in spring, certainly in the UK anyway, we yeah. get a lot of wet days and some still colder days, you know, and I think that this is perfect for one of those days, mm. right? It's just that little bit warming, but like you say, it's not got heaps of peat or loads of sherry or it's not overly rich. Yeah. And equally, again, I really don't think it's overly complex, which is quite nice. It's stripped back. It's wonderful mm. distillate, just shining through. It's at a wonderful cask strength. And it just, it's it's exactly like you say, it's got this warming finish that I'm actually yeah. really, really enjoying. Um, where are we at price point on this one? I'm fascinated by this. So this one is, uh, well, this one's seventy five pounds. Okay, so yeah, the same as the last one, or was the last? Uh, one so there was seventy. The 70, last one. So this one, this, this one's the next next jump up. For fifty eight point four percent, you know, mm. and you know, again, ten or eleven year old liquid, pretty pretty reasonable, yeah. I'd say. What are your thoughts, David? Are you enjoying it? It's gone. Let's go. <laughs> You must have enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, it's finished. It was, it was lovely. It was, it was lovely. lovely. As you say, I love that the end there. You, just very lightly warming. Um, what next? Joe? What next? Well, I think we've we've teased the Craig Ellicky a couple of times. Oh. I think probably probably move on to this uh, this this beautiful red number. I'm the sorry, real bad you. boy. <laughs> yeah, I'm so happy. <laughs> Shoved here. So this Craig Ellicky, uh, when was it? Distilled, bottled. Uh, they're all they're all bottled twenty twenty three, aren't they? Uh, but, so yeah, so they're all bottled December twenty three, January twenty four. Okay, so, cool, cool. Um, so yeah, so just in time. So for, this is a, a ten year old by the looks of it. Ten year yeah. old, and was uh, it? Finished and this one in is Rondo? so this one is a we got it as a hogshead, and we've I picked up the wrong bottle. <laughs> Classic. There we go. That one's better. So this one, uh, yeah, once again, a Hogshead 2013 Hogshead, um, and we've spent it spent the last two years in a Margot cask, mm. so a wine finish. Oh, this is so. <laughs> that, oh, do you know if it was three. a first I thought it was Margot sherry. Sorry. Or... Um, I believe. Oh, I actually I don't know. Okay. Um, so yeah, so it's uh, just under just under S 24 months. Something in that, that I'm Margot. fascinated about. You guys at Berries, obviously, kind of having your 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 start in wine. Uh, I know whiskey has been a focal part. Um, you know pretty much all along or certainly for the last hundred plus years um but wine is the main part of your business it's fair to say yeah uh yes yeah uh, yeah i think it's probably wine is currently what we're most known for um, okay maybe that's yeah. a better way of saying it. you're better <laughs> yeah, known for I think your wine it, yeah uh, at the moment um i mean if you go back 25 years uh yep. you would know berries for cutty sark yep. our blended whiskey um and people i think had conversations in reverse like Oh, you you do wine, right? Um, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but now, yeah, now now we're sort of you know much sort of much more focused on the wine has sort of grown over the last twenty years to be the predominant. It it's an ebb and flow with our with our history. Well, I mean, you guys have um, also owned the Glen Rothers at points, yeah. and so you know, I completely understand. Sorry, not yeah. to take no, away no, no, from no, more no, 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 huge no. impact um, on the spirits industry. I would think of berries, and I would first think wine. Yeah, and obviously, getting your hands on so many fantastic bottles, but also a lot of on premier wine, I'm gonna guess. Mm -hmm. You probably have access to some fantastic wine casks. Yes. Question for you is, is this cask from your sort of wine side of your business or is this how do you how do you source casks i'm I, fascinated i was waiting for this question about this cask <laughs> am i gonna get you in trouble have... with somebody else no, no, again no, now no. somebody else, another side of the business is great thanks no, asking the wrong because... fucking questions <laughs> i thought this this morning when i woke up and i'm like i'm gonna have to have i'm gonna have to find out where this cask came from right um and i have looked at you know looked once again into our records and I, I just don't know. Okay. <laughs> so fair enough. So quite a lot of our wine casts do come from our wine partners. Okay. Uh, but then again, we also have uh, we work with our cooperage out in Spain, who also, under our request, do wine cast finishes. Okay. Um, for these, uh, for this one, I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, I, I'm guessing just by the colour uh, and 
Um, if I can get into it, hopefully we can tell from the flavour if it's <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I am apparently not having any fun with these bottles today. <laughs> never never cut your fingernails before a tasting. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Margot is, uh, is, is, is one of my favourites. Uh, um, I, I know nothing about wine, to be honest, other than what I like. Um, you know, Bordeaux, Burgundy is definitely my sort of favourites. Uh, but Krigalicki... I thought this was a sherry cask when we were talking about it beforehand. The fact that this is a wine cask yeah. finish for two years. So I In think our uh, whiskey of the year last year, if I'm right, was the Craig Allecky in wine was it i believe that craig Allecky hotel uh single cask was it sherry a sherry cask. i wish sherry okay yeah, yeah. there was one where it's we've had a couple butt. of craig Allecky's with finished in wine on the, uh, the 18 the year old that uh ian brought along very kindly the uh, exceptional cask ah that was what yeah yeah and uh, which was again always, in our half year roundup right to where we were at. came in twice that yeah was it, yeah um it always works so well Craig Alecky and, and red wine. I think yeah. when you're looking at meaty whiskies or peaty whiskies, mm -hmm. for me anyway, so I've been massively focused on, the tannins of wine match them so perfectly because you get these big, bolshy flavours that complement each other quite nicely. The sweetness of the wine, the sort of textures of the tannins complementing the meatiness of the, of the whiskey or, or the peatiness complemented by the sweetness it, it, it for me it's just such a winning combination um and yeah i mean uh interesting to move as you said not do i've never thought of it as craig Allecky's younger brother but <laughs> i'm gonna steal that one from you're, now on you're Thank more you. than welcome <laughs> uh, i think you're, you're, you're you are you're spot on and and this is gonna be a real i'm, I'm beyond excited right now <laughs> Nice. Oh, I really hope uh... this one lives up to. Uh... <laughs> if it doesn't, I will be brutally fucking honest. I'll have somebody else, some other department say, "Why did you share this with him? He's an asshole." <laughs> right, exciting stuff. Nice little nose prickle there, actually. Mm. So, can you tell us much? So, this is Chateau Margaux. Yep. Can you tell us much about Chateau Margaux? I know I'm putting you on the spot completely. I know your speciality, and you said this to me yeah, beforehand. Yeah. I'm not focused on wine. So please don't feel put on the spot. So under the bus you go, Joe. Yeah, so there you go. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, <laughs> Can you tell us anything about it? Yeah, so um, I think, hang on, I'm going to caveat this quite heavily. But yeah, um, no, look, I, you I'm can't hold Joe to any of yeah. this. He's a spirit yeah. specialist, and I've put him seriously on the spot yeah. here. Because I think I probably could have said this before, but now I'm questioning myself just because I think Mogo is a Bordeaux. Um, I think it's... I think so of, as well. Yeah, I Again. think it's one of the sort of more heavier... Um, <sighs> actually, no, I'm going to confidently... I'm going to move into confidence now. I'm pretty sure it's a one of those sort of heavier Bordeaux blends. Yeah. Um, ones that sort of, you know, always has... Kind of, it's one of the ones you buy when it's younger and they say, oh, don't, don't drink that for 10 years. For sure. Um, That's how yeah, I think Yeah. A really good one to sit in the yeah. cellar, let it age for a long yeah. time. The older it gets, in theory, the better it gets. Yeah, yeah. That's how I think yeah. of Margot. But again, I know nothing. Yeah. So okay. And I think yeah. So with this, and we, we've done this, and we've played around with Margots, and we've played around with Pomeroles, which I in the same sort of category for sure. I think when they kind of get to that, when you get a good cast that's had sort of proper aging of that wine in, and you it's really quite ready for that whiskey. Okay. You end up with beautiful dark fruits that come out of this i've instantly sort of put this to my nose and you're right there's a bit of there's a bit of tingle on the nose but then when you find it there's a bit of like black cherry in there mm. i always find them a little bit like um co like cough lozenges right uh, like cherry lozenges and okay. stuff like that when i find sort of you know as you said meaty whiskies with wine casks yeah i find they really do kind of get almost medicinal on the nose i think it's just one of those ones that haven't actually tasted this yet but Instantly, I just have you not tried this one at all yet? Nope. Oh, no, I was, I was, I was waiting one. for this. <laughs> oh, okay, well, you're very kind to share it with us. We'll all find out what we think. Talking, guys, you look excited, Steve. It's, Talk to us. It's chewy, like you say, it's got that sort of dark cherry, you know, dark fruits, almost like a kind of meaty, sticky toffee pud pudding esque. It's mm. yummy. You can chew on this all afternoon. Yeah. And given that it's finished as well and the colour, I would probably say that I'd go a bit with that. Maybe as a first fill. Yep. If not second, definitely. Yeah. Um and sometimes the integration for me with 
finishes in that short period of time in things like wine, sometimes it doesn't marry quite well, you know. Mm. This, I think, has integrated beautifully, just right, yeah. But let me know your thoughts, guys. <laughs> yeah, this is dark cherries, black forest gatto. Mm. It's got a lot of texture. It's uh, it's interesting that uh, I really, I'm not a big, when you talk about sort of cherry sweets or cherry lozenges. <laughs> I thought you said, yeah. I hate that. I'm not a big lozenger fan. <laughs> I, I, I'm not when it comes to cherry sweet. I'd always go for orange or, you know. Cherry drops? Yeah. Classic. Oh, oh disgusting. Oh, Cannot right. stand them. So right. I, I wouldn't ever associate it with that. But I kind of know what you mean and yeah. as well from the kind of almost medicinal forefront. But it's very pleasant. I say I don't like that sort of, I understand what you mean. Mm. To me... Yeah, it's not actually as bolshy as I thought it would be, which suggests to me potentially a second fill cask. Mm -hmm. It's really wonderfully integrated, though. Stevie's absolutely right. For only a two-year finish, it's it's had a really wonderful impact. The tannins are very well blended together. Um, and it's really... Sorry, what's the strength? It's 56.2. 56, 56, 56.2, 56, two, okay. Yeah, I 56, guess it's cast strength, two. Then, probably. So, so it's a hogshead or potentially a barrique if it's Margot. But it says Hogshead. So yeah. We're saying Hogshead. Um, mm. Joe? The fact that it's only two it's years first... old, I'm very impressed by the Krigalaki. Mm. I am. I think it's... That is wonderful. That is... <laughs> <laughs> I may just buy this bottle. <laughs> I think I will. And price point? Uh, price point is... Because I'm uh, probably going to sign up to the mailing list for this. £90. Okay. Okay. For... for, for... Now how it tastes, I think that's that's so reasonable. I, I love the way the tannins are integrated. It's got mm. this really wonderful sweetness that tethers off with the drying, the meatiness of the Krigalaki. It all just ties in so beautifully. This is a wonderful expression. But again, you know, talk about meaty or peaty whiskies and wine casks and one that I know you always think of and I always think of is our Port Charlotte, the Von Ramane that we, <clears throat> we bottled. Um, Von Ramane obviously being kind of the epitome of Burgundy, but similar styles, right? Um, that was so thick and bold and bulgy and to a lot of people, overpowering, over the hill, you know, too much. Offensive. Offensive. And I think that this is, as as we can be, right? I think it suits us perfectly. But I think that this is, again, we talk about seasonal releases. It's got that, but it's it's to a line. It's to a point. It's well measured. You know, the fact that it's, you can tell that it's a finish. Yeah. And it's a beautiful finish. And again, Berry's doing what Berry's does so well with all of the wealth of experience that you guys have over the last few hundred years, you know, we talk about the, the Glen Lossy watering that down. It's beautifully done. Looking at this one, it's been left at a cast strength, but it's been finished. And to me, it's just been finished for a really wonderful amount of time. Everything is balanced. There's nothing that's missing. There's nothing that's lacking. You know, it's it's everything and more. And at 56.2, I think, again, the alcohol just sits in the glass so fucking well. Like really, really delicious and Moorish. This is one of those ones that I just will go back to again and again, and I'm keeping the rest of this sample. <laughs> and you know, it's just so fucking tasty. It really. I poured myself quite a short, you know, got a few whiskeys. <laughs> to get sorry, yeah, you're not so having any more, man. I, I, I kept dying it up. No, you know? no, 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 no. I didn't no, think I'll with the rest of the other bottles we poured that had quite a lot left in it. Yeah. <laughs> you just have to I'm trying to page through the, you know, the lineup we have here today, uh, but I could easily just it's finish. Exceptional. Yeah. It's just so well put together and it's again a wonderful expression of kogalaki and to me tastes older than 10 yeah it's yeah. quite a bit older than 10 it's actually mellowed i know that it's 56 too and that's you know a lot of people at home maybe will think oh that's quite strong maybe it's so well integrated it tastes to me like it's been in cask for 15 plus mm -hmm. years again and it's just had time to mellow and ease and become this wonderfully balanced and mature expression you know for sure um, so, Joe, do you have anything to do, well. or can you tell us anything about how you source your cask, how you choose them? Because you obviously probably are not short um, of a cask <laughs> or two, right, in your, you know, um, warehouses. How, how does it go when, when when you are choosing casks? Is that something you're involved with, or...? Uh, so I'm slowly beginning to help out. Um, we have a new whiskey, uh, our spirit curator, uh, Felix Deer, who joined us from Boutiquey. 
uh, who's recently joined us. Um, so working with him a lot closer. Um, but how we source our casts are, as you said, sort of, we have got our connection to the wine trade. Um, we've got our wonderful crew bridge um, out in um, out in Spain uh, mm-hmm. that we work very closely with, um, as well as, you know, buying casks. Sometimes we, uh, we, ju- we when we buy casks, we like to reuse the ones that we've got different spirits in. We've got one coming up, which we'll, uh, which we'll talk about. So we very much have a wealth of, of actual cast that we can use. Okay. So it means that when we're actually doing our finishes, when we're having a look at what to sort of how to finish, we have a lot more sort of freedom of actually looking at what that initial spirit is doing and actually trying to match um, flavors with it. We've done a, we last year we did a, a couple of sort of like lighter highlands, like we did a Glencadam in a. Um, Pinot de Chiron cask because we were tasting it and we just felt that it was like a bit of peach, a bit of cream that was coming through, classic Glen Cadam. And then actually, you know what? What's going to match that? What's really going to sort of heighten up those yellow fruits, bring out a bit more spice, bring a bit of texture to quite a light spirit was the Pinot cask. Uh, so very much sort of our team. Um, I do not take any. I literally sit in the room and go, yes, that sounds great. <laughs> Please just keep bringing the samples to me. Um, but yeah, so we have very much, uh, we have a great finishing program, which just for me is just exciting because you end up with things like with sort of this Craig Alec, which just is just in harmony between the two, the distillate and the wood. Yeah, no, absolutely. And as I sip on it more, I'm here and I'm, it's, it's this wonderful sweet stone fruit start quite Mm. plummy. And then it does get a little bit darker going into the cherries and then richer, the sort Mm. of chocolatey, yeah, yeah, Black Forest Gatto esque. It's just so wonderful, and the way those tannins just linger in your mouth mm. and just keep on going and mm. going. And go- I'm sorry, I'm making. He's hit. Yeah. I'm, 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 He's hit the song. None of that. Fuck off. Leave me alone. <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> it's this is by far my favourite, and oh, I tell you what, for ninety pounds, it's so worth it. We talk about. Again, the fact that you don't put age statements on these, you know, we talked about this before, and Krigaliki is one that keeps coming up actually on this note is sometimes you see an age statement and you think, oh, well, it's worth it or it's not worth it based on the price and the age statement. This is beyond its years. Yeah. And I think a large part of that is the fantastic finish that you've done, this expertly chosen cask that just matches the liquid so well and complements it in so many different ways. And like I say, I would, you know, blind tasting definitely think this is 15 plus you know and so when you're thinking about it from that point of view you know i mean already 10 year old craig Alecky in a margot cask at 90 pounds it's a buy right mm. but when you're looking at it from the point of view of actually it's beyond its years it's got the depth and maturity of a much older dram it's just a no fucking rain but i won't spoil what we think of it just yet guys <laughs> we'll get to the ratings at the end i can breathe out you know yeah, no 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 you're all right on this one I most people so. have to weigh in till the end no, no thank no, you no, very no, much no. you're okay on this one i think definitely all right cool uh, let's move on before stevie really launches himself over and tries to get the rest of the the, the end of this sample dram here that i'm saving what is next in the lineup what else have we got we've got some wonderful whiskeys left i know how um oh. How adventurous are we feeling? We got four more left. We can we can dive into these all of these. Or... Entirely up to you, Joe. We're we're here for you. And yep. you know, if we need to do the tough work for all of you at home and try four more whiskies, <laughs> we'll do it. We'll do the seven if that's what we need to do. Um, it's entirely up to you, though. So well, we'll I think we'll we'll uh, before we jump into Pete, we'll uh, we'll jump to North Speyside. This is a very Speyside heavy release. This one. Okay. Cool. Um, but very much. As have you seen with the ones we've released so far? Maybe some of those more older style, um, older style space sides. Um, to carry out that with the Glendossi, which I think is that more modern, lighter floral style. Um, and we're going to go to a bit of a favourite of mine, a Glengarry, um, but a port finish oh, yes. Glengarry. Glengarry is an unsung hero. Yeah, real unsung much. hero. For, for me, it's sort of. Whiskey perfection can be summed up in um, Glengarry finished in like sherry, uh, but I think Port sort of takes it if you get it right. Once again, haven't tried this one. Been waiting for this occasion. You could be setting yourself up for failure here. <laughs> Careful. Careful. Fair enough. No, absolutely. Yeah, I, I appreciate what you mean. Sometimes the sort of standardized thought process of, oh, well, this matches up perfectly with a sherry cask or a bourbon or whatever. 
it, it, it's great, but then when you do experiment with just something a little bit different to add yeah. that next depth of flavor, it can be wonderful. It's got a beautiful kind of rosé tint to it, hasn't it, almost, you know, which obviously port does. Sorry, Joe. Um, this is beautiful. Did you say this is a finish? Or? This is a finish. Yep. Yep. Uh, and for how long do we know? Um, I think this one was 18 months. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. I think we did this the latter half of 2021. All right, cool. So... Um, Distilled 2011, bottle 23, so we're looking at an 11, maybe 12-year-old whiskey, 56.5, and it's a hogshead finished in a port hogshead. Yeah. Which is not as common, so obviously you've had that coopered to yourself. Port normally is matured in port pipes, which are big 700-liter, not butts, pipes, but um, yeah, big old casks, really. So uh, wonderful to see. It is just such a beautiful color. Lovely. There is something beautifully elegant about color of a port finish isn't there yeah. that sort of lovely sort of pink tinge that sort of you know especially when you sort of see it on a shelf or uh when you see it on a i, I find they stand out so well in whiskey shows when you've got that white tabletop yeah and you just walk down all you can just see is this rosé thing and yes you're like, I, yeah i want to try that one please <laughs> it's, it's very rare in my mind you're absolutely right i think a port finished whiskey that's finished in a good port cask and therefore natural color I find it hard to find better looking whiskies, do you know? And this is the thing, like we always buy whiskey really, unless we're lucky enough to have somebody like yourself visit us and share all these samples so that we know what we're getting into. If you're buying a full bottle off the shelf, you're buying very much on the information that's given to you, but it's all about the look and the color. Yes. Um, And what's such a shame for me is how so many brands now will pour a load of caramel and coloring into their whiskies. Something I wanted to come on to, what a beautiful way to get into it. You're always natural colour at berries? Always natural colour. You don't uh, mess single, around. Single cask, always um, unchill filtered, you know, natural colour. Is there any of your expressions that you add colour or you chill filter? So we do have one, uh, okay. which is our classic range sherry cask, oh, um, okay. which is our sort of, you know, our core range. Uh, it's £45 a bottle. Okay. Um, what we want, that is very much our expression of what sherry cask, Speyside whiskey is all about. Okay. Um, we do add a tiny bit of caramel into that, okay. just you know, just to get sort of consistency along the the range, because we are messing around with a mixture of uh, refill and first fill sherry butts um, with enough. those casks. The the sort of change can be a, quite kind of different, so we just touch a little bit occasionally when it needs it. Well, for a core um, range product, yeah. I believe we'll judge you too harshly. No, no, no. <laughs> and we're not trying it today, so we can't judge you anyway. We'll be nice. We'll be um, nice. I'll behave myself. Yeah. But anything, anything uh, in our single cast, yeah. We are uh, we put it through a sieve to take out any lumps, um, and then we put it straight into a bottle. Um, that, that's all we do. I judge you yeah. for taking out the lumps. I like chewing a bit of wood every now and then, to be honest. But sure, look, it's a standard, so fair enough. Okay, so we're talking. Sorry, I said ten. No, 11, 11, 12. 11, 12. Do you know what the year old Glen Geary. The, the nose takes me back to being a little kid, and it's that paper bag finishing school for me getting a pick and mix pack of sweets, opening that bag, yes. nose it in. Yeah, it's got that very sweet, that kind of almost like marshmallow, tutti frutti Marshmallow, that's you a know? good yeah. shout, dude. Fuck, yeah. No, I haven't tasted it yet, but you no, know, no, it's no, just I, like- I haven't that, tasted it either, but yeah. on the nose. Bag of pick and mix, you know, just anyway, yeah. And it's actually, it's uh, for 50, sorry, I said 56, didn't I? 56.5, <sighs> for 56.5, you could go swimming in this. There is Ooh. no nose prick or nothing no, interfering yep. with the wonderful, soft, sweet flavors that are coming out there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I remember no nose prickle on the bag of sweets as a kid. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's exactly what I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, it's, no. It's, it's exactly, no, it's sure. just soft, it's gentle, it's inviting, it's, you know, yeah. very approachable. Marshmallows. I think I've been swung there. Mm. You've uh, given me a little bit of placebo effect <laughs> potentially, but what a good shout. See, I was going down a different way. I was going a little bit like, um, do you remember flying saucers? Yes. Before you bit into them. Yes. There's a little bit of sherbet there, but there is just that sort of sugared sweetness. Yep. Um, and that <laughs> follows through on the palate as well. Um, it's got that lovely port drying yeah. element to it that that I, I I love port finishes when when they're done right. Obviously, sometimes they're not. Um, but that kind of sweetness carries through there. That, And it's not like, and I know uh, what I'm talking about here is very artificial sweetness. It is that, but it's not that. Um, 
Yeah, and it doesn't even taste the strength that no. it is either. It's quite, it's quite juicy. It's kind of carried yeah. the, um, sort of carried that juiciness along. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been brilliant. Completely agree. Yeah. And I just, I think this is the joys of, of Glengarry. I think Glengarry can really hold its weight with a good finish. It still shines through mm. for quite a light spirit compared to, you know, the Craig Anarchy that we've, uh, that we've just gone into. This really still holds its own. Still holds its own. Yeah. Definitely. Is definitely. It isn't killed off for a, a spirit, which is probably known to be a bit lighter. And I go and go out on a limb here and say, there's almost like a, I keep saying herbaceous. That's not the right word for it but there is a kind of like a herby element at the end there for me yeah um anyway i, I find um until glengarry gets much older it still keeps its grassiness its new make is very grassy right i think they've got quite a long fermentation time that kind of keeps that okay keeps that sort of that grassiness that freshness so i think it shines through here a little bit maybe a bit maybe like damp dewy grass sort of at the end is right yeah herbaceous yeah where i'm seeing that yeah um, and i always get sort of adds a bit more of a mm. forest floor element though yeah. it's kind of a bit more piney depth it is mm. yeah yeah maybe a little bit mm -hmm. piney i think almost a little bit dirty but it's it's not quite as green right as i you know there's a bit more that de there's greenness there there's pineyness yeah. there sure but there's some depth behind it i'm getting this really weird um and weird in a good way sorry i say weird and people think it's terrible <laughs> i'm getting this really interesting <laughs> mouthfeel um almost like a separation at the very very beginning if i swell it around my mouth i'm getting this separation almost as if it's between like whiskey and port almost mm. it's like two separate things and as it stays in your mouth just for a couple of seconds it's at the very forefront they then come together in this beautiful sort of amalgamation this wonderful way there's a word i cannot think of but you know when you have almost oil and water separating yes yep. do you know what i mean i'm getting this kind of it's very strange it's really interesting but this the just the initial mouthfeel is kind of that separation between two things and then they come together in this really wonderful way. Salinity? Is it we no, 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 no. So, no, it's not good, salinity. Good word though. Good yeah. word, yeah. No. yeah, yeah. I was word of the day, everybody. Almost like a almost like a, a <laughs> symphony, you know, those sort of, you know, those two competing parts that can bring together. Yeah, but it's weird yeah. that they're and sorry if I've said it again, it's weird. It's strange. It's interesting <laughs> that they're separated to begin with, because yeah. it's not like this is you sometimes you try a, a finish, you know, and there's clearly been some sherry or some port or some something left in the cask. Yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of like, okay, am I drinking whiskey or am I drinking sherry? It's not that. It's not an overpowering port. It's not but there's just this slight separation to begin with. And exactly they do. It's really interesting. Your your mouth is almost trying to get around it, and then it comes together in this symphony yeah. of flavor and character and just beautiful. But not an overly long finish, a medium length finish, but just really nice characteristics coming through. The tannins married together with the flavor really wonderfully. It's uh, it's different Glengarry. It's yeah. interesting. And yeah. again, it really does stand up to that. The fact that we did the Krigaliki first. Yeah. Now trying this, if you would sort of show me to them before, I would have said, well, obviously the Glengarry mm. first. You know, we don't want to. Over, <laughs> overshadow it too Hit much. Hit the peak you know? of the mountain and yeah. start. Yeah, no. But it's really, it's a wonderful, you know, you know your stuff, even though you didn't try either. Yeah, no, no. You're, you're presenting them in a wonderful way here, Joe. Good I had, a, I, had a, I had a feeling this was going to gonna hold up to itself. Yeah, um, oh, it's really cool. Yeah. Even though it's, I find it funny, really interesting that you're correct to yourself with your wording. I find when I talk, especially about space side, right. I have to correct myself because the wording I use, I use a lot of, um, wording, especially with the southern distilleries, of right. like dirty, filthy, you know, a bit, you know, a bit mulchy. Oh, I use like that, that all the time. Yeah, yeah all, no. all of those words, and because you know, it makes so much sense to me, and then you realise you're in front of a room full of people that may not understand that. <laughs> this know, is a good dirty, <laughs> mulchy, filthy. You you're know, thoroughly you enjoying know, it. Actually, this is, yeah, yeah. this is great. Oh, these are all negative words. Yeah, you know, this yeah. is this is good. This yeah. is what old space art should be. Like. It's actually, I was at um, a tasting recently enough, and I said weird, and actually it was at the Edinburgh Whiskey Festival and uh, we had a wonderful guest on sharing some really wonderful whiskey and I said it was weird and she took almost offense to it and I was like no no, no I didn't mean it offensively it was it's a good thing you know <laughs> yeah. sorry I just mean weird is indifferent maybe yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry do you know what I mean so this is the thing yeah you sometimes you are checking yourself and especially for all of our wonderful audience at home I think most of them are kind of at least 
well on their journey. I don't think we have many new drinkers. Weirdos you know? like us, yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. I think most of them are complete <laughs> fucking degenerates and strange. They love the filth. And- yeah, they love that filth and the dirt and the weirdness of it all. <laughs> Otherwise, why the fuck would they be listening to us, right? But, but yeah, no, I think this is, it is. It's strange, it's different. I've never had that sort of a mouth texture before. Like I say, sometimes mm. you get a dram and it is like, this is sherry or this is port, yeah. this is wine. Oh, come on, lads, you've left something in the cask yeah. here. Yeah. It's not that at all, but it's just this almost separation in in liquid. It's indescribable. It's really I think I, challenging I, and different. Yeah, I think it comes just from that sort of a sweeter top note and that sort of you know the body of the um, of that port, and then sort of that lighter sort of bling. You're just yeah. in competition, but yes. sort of you know dancing together. I yes, just think, yes, you know. yeah, no, so definitely. When I was when I was starting my journey, I had sort of a. I got taught about finishing and stuff like that. And someone said that if it's not an orchestra in your mouth, if it's not bringing it together all at the end, it's not the crescendo of the of like the London Symphony Orchestra, then you're not doing it right because it's meant to take you on a journey. Yes. That's the joys of finishing. Definitely. If you've got something, as you said, that has maybe got a little bit left in the wood, then why not just drink sherry? Exactly. Because you know what? It's cheaper. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. No, definitely. But yeah, but I think these finishes are, are just sort of, you know, as I said, I can take no credit for this. I literally open these bottles and chat with you guys. I have no <laughs> hand in the craft. Well, whoever has had a hand in this seriously yeah. knows what they're doing. It's really impressive. And again, wonderful to see Glenn Geary a name that you probably won't have heard about a huge amount outside of the OB. It's not easy to get your hands on. We've got a few casks over the whiskey round. I'm so excited about them. And maybe now I'll look at some Paul's casks. Mm. <laughs> maybe now I have to. I think, you know, it's got to be considered because this is going to give a nod to berries if we do. <laughs> oh, this will definitely shout out. We'll Absolutely. collaborate maybe. So, you know, so, spring release available in uh, 19th of March and also in about two or three years time. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. No, this is wonderful. This is really, really, this is... Um, the most challenging, the most interesting of the day. Mm. I, I prefer the Krigaliki, mm-hmm. but I'm a fiend for that sort of a style. This is very different. Yeah, you know, we we started with two very classic, very kind of stripped back, elegant whiskies. Moving on to the Krigaliki, showcasing how you guys do finishes so well, and I think a beautiful follow up because again, it's just reaffirming that. Berries knows what they're fucking doing when it comes to finishing <laughs> good liquid in cool casks. This is really, really different. God, yeah, I'm, I'm very, very excited about this stream. Really. I, I'm going to have to start saving some fucking money. I've only got a month. Oh, God. I need to make sure all of the uh, the piggy bank is going to be broken open here, I think. Where are we going next? So then, where Joe? are we going? Uh, I think we're going to go to a bit of Highland Peat next. We're going to go to a, uh, a a bit of a favourite berries to bottle, you okay. know, because it's normally a bit decisive. But okay. I don't think we've ever... A, we've ever bottled a bad one. We're going to Ardmore. I love Ardmore. I was hoping you, I was waiting. Is it going to be rude more from Glen Turret? No. And we had Ardmore. Ardmore last night on our intro. We did the Ardmore Legacy. Right. And for 20 quid, we were I saying- I think the, uh, the intro to Pete might come out after this episode now, to be honest. For sure, for sure. However- And so keep your eyes open, guys. We're going to have an intro to Pete episode, yeah. which does include an Ardmore because Ardmore is such a wonderful oh. Highland whiskey. It's got a really great mainland style of peat. Um, and yeah, no, I think... Uh, sorry, what was your point there, Stevie? Well, I, th- I thought you were kind of shutting me up to not no, spoil no, the no. end of the episode. I don't want to spoil anything. Go on. No, no, no. <laughs> if it was, was coming out afterwards. No, I was just sort of saying, thank you, Joe. Um, you know, given the line-off of intro to Pete, Ardmore stood so strong from their entry-level bottle. From Non-age the statement, range. yeah. Non-age statement at £20. It, it, you know, it, just, yeah, it was such a great liquid. I'm very excited to try it coming off the back of that last night. Mm. I don't actually drink Ardmore too much, uh, unfortunately. It's one of my favourites. Is it? And as I think I said in the Intro to Pete episode, looking at Ardmore, it's one of those ones where I would always search out an IB. Again, going back to our start of the conversation, yeah. I really did start. Thank you, Stevie, with IBs and my journey and, and exploring and seeing what was what. And I think Ardmore is a great example of that because you try their legacy, you try their core range. And don't get me wrong, it's lovely. It's great yeah. stuff. But what we what have we got here, actually? So, interest. This is just a plain hogshead? So no, this is a Madeira finish. This is a definitely right. another one of our, our finishes. Cool. Uh, but with that sort of earthy uh, Ardmore peat. I love it. 
This one I have tried. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. This one I wrote the tasting. Yeah, I was going to say. So you're, um, you're 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 a lot of a lot of writing tasting notes yeah. as part of your job, which is such a cool job to have. I yeah. love the writing taste. I'm not sure I'm very good at it, but yes. um, I'd love to hear your tasting notes once we start getting into this. But exactly that, I think once you look at IB Ardmore's and looking at those interesting finishes, Madeira, really wonderful sort of desserty wine. You know, it's it's. It's where you can start really getting to grips with what you like, what you don't like, and what you want to take on to your next dram in your mm. whiskey journey. Madeira isn't something that you'll see everywhere, but in the IB market, people are toying around with these wonderful maturations, finishes, etc. And I think that for me, Ardmore is such a diverse spirit whether it is their stripped back core range or, or an IB version where it's just a bourbon matured, untouched, unadulterated, leave it as, you know, to sing the, the mainland peat that it sings, or you start putting these wonderful sherry, wine, fortified wine, all of these different sorts of finishes on it. It's just interesting, you know, and it works in such so many different ways. Mm. Um, so cool. All right, so where are we at then? We've got... A 2009 Ardmore bottled in 2023, so 13, maybe 14 years old. Madeira finish. How long was the finish, Joe? Um, I think this was another one of our 18 months. But okay, yeah, I've I've did look Not up, anything. and now I've uh, don't it. worry, we won't hold you to anything yet. <laughs> Not a bother at all. 53.6, yeah. which is again presumably cask strength. Yep. All of these cask strength are the first. Cool, great to know. Um, and interesting, actually, because at 13, 14 years old, 53, 6, it's, it's dropped a little yeah, bit, you know, yeah. not a huge amount. Um, I'll probably be asking you something again. I'll put you on the spot. No, do you know if it was filled at 63, 5? Uh, I'd more normally do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I right. think I think they... they By and large, yeah. I've seen only a few casks that were yeah. filled at higher strengths, yeah. but normally casked at 63, 63, 4, 63, 5. Yeah. So. This, is, this is hardly one that we haven't had much information about. Okay. That, that. Just to lot, buy it a little lot, bit later lot, in this journey. A lot of casks, uh, well, not always, um, but sometimes we just, we buy liquid, we buy casks, and they don't really come with much information. Um, and this one was one of those. Sometimes okay. we get all the information and I kind of read through it and geek out about it and go, oh, exciting about this. But yeah, other times we just kind of, you know, this is the year, this is it. This is what we've got to have got. Fair and, play. you know, work it out from your own nose. And that's, that's, part of my job i love for sure sort of, you know trying to just break down these sort of spirits and actually trying to work out what's happened to them so yeah sure, so i i think this was standard film 63.5 but it's held it's held its alcohol well mm -hmm. for something which is what 14 ish years um for sure interesting uh ardmore's beam isn't it i'm just trying to think ardmore's beam central yes yeah yeah, and again, one of their kind of workhorse distilleries, I know that they've got their legacy and a bit of a core range. They very much focus on the legacy. And it's so accessible. You guys can pick it up in the supermarkets at great prices. I think you picked it up in Morrison's for like 21 quid. Mm -hmm. And it was on offer, but still 21 pounds for yeah. a bottle of whiskey. Yeah. Pretty fucking good. Um, but this is the thing. Once you start getting into the IB ranges, like I say, you can really explore how diverse this spirit is. Um, I want to tuck in here more. have you not yet i've not i've not even nosed it my guy where, where are you at talk to us so i can uh, shut up and enjoy it um i'm getting this lovely rich stewed fruit cooking cinnamon cloves that sort of thing going on okay um which is interesting i tell you what i'm getting no peat on the nose no no and i got a really, really it's, kind it's of like, like a, an odd one like a kind of over, over ripened grilled pineapple in the nose, you know, yeah. like in that smoky. I get the, the stewed fruits. I'm not getting the pineapple yet, but give me a second. But that's I don't know. That's very generic to say, but but like apples and pears. But yeah, exactly that. A little bit of plumminess in there as well. Yeah, yep. bit of cinnamon on it. But you it's know, very light and Ooh. very uh, again. Sorry, fifty three six. It's so light and approachable and elegant and soft on the nose. There's actually wonderful. not a huge amount really going is. on there for me on the nose. It's just very easy. Sorry, I uh, zoned out a little bit throughout your chat there. Did you say this is a finish? That's very rude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being honest. So yes, Madeira, Madeira <laughs> You never fucking listen to me. <laughs> like an old married couple, Joe. Yeah, we believe, Joe believes, I'm just human. an 18-month finish that's okay. right people probably still hopefully you're with us at home I'm sure they've tuned out like yeah. Stevie yeah. <laughs> pay attention 
We've got a wonderful <laughs> guest here sharing some great whiskies. We believe circa 18 months. Yeah, ish. about 18 months. Uh, yeah, okay. I think our Madeira cast came in at the end of 2021. Um, okay. Okay. Again. No, no, that would make it two years. Once again, maths is failing me. <laughs> yeah, Joe, people are going to uh, come for you, mate. In yeah, so any maths teacher that I had in the past I was a bad student. I apologize. <laughs> you don't need maths for whiskey. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> He succeeded anyway. <laughs> I'm very happy with my C minus. I got there, got through. That's all you need, man. It's a pass. It's a fucking pass. I tell you what, you're getting a lot more than a pass on these whiskeys. I've only put it to my lips once now, but again, really interesting, wonderful finish. Mm, yes. The heat of the Ardmore is so soft and gentle on this. Yeah. Though. It's really, really, again, normally I talk about Ardmore Sorry, I say it time. Every time we talk about Ardmore, I say this, you're probably getting bored of me at home. You probably are tuning out now. <laughs> it's a lovely amount of dirt in your mouth is a yeah. typical thing. It's just that filthy, earthy dirt, yeah. which again, lots of people who don't drink whiskey, go, I don't want dirt in my mouth. <laughs> I do. I always yeah. want it in my mouth. This isn't that though. No, it's got a little bit of that, but it's mainly wood ash. Mm. Right. It's, it's wood ash. It's That's a exactly bit, you what know, it is. It's the it's, yeah. um, remnants of the, yeah. the cast. It's, it's the almost. floors of a Dunnage warehouse, that ash yes. flooring. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I've never so, and, tasted that yeah. before, mate. Have you oh, yeah. been licking the floors? <laughs> and uh... Get to spring back, come down on my hands and knees, licking the floors. <laughs> don't, don't you not? I'm sure there's been a cast for two leaks on there. I'll show it's very tasty. <laughs> as soon as the counter is <laughs> off, I'm just like... <laughs> But you're right, the, the finish again, you know, and I think that's where that's happened. I think that has dampened down the peat, that kind of flash. Well, it's not a flash finish, but, you know, mm -hmm. it is, you know, a short um, and strong finish um, that integrates so well. And I think that does dampen down that peat. I actually don't but know there is... as well. I'm trying to think about the Ardmore because we've got a lot of Ardmore casks under management ourselves, and I love it. It is one of my favourite distillates and a really great expression that, again, like I say, you can just toy around with, you yeah. can do all sorts of things. We've got yeah. some of it which is leaving in bourbon, some of it that we've put into fresh sherry, some of it that we're putting into wine casks, fortified wine casks. It's so interesting, so diverse. Um, we even tried, actually, it was Keeble Casks, Ardmore, that they put in rum. Oh. Was it not? I, I thought that's where you were going. Yeah. I normally I... hate rum finishes. Ah. <laughs> and George Keeble, and if you haven't watched it, it's at the uh, Edinburgh Whiskey Festival. We've got the episode out. We'll link it in the description below. It's one of the few rum finished whiskies that just was so well balanced. It had this wonderful sweetness that balanced out the peat. But this is something entirely different again. It's really gentle touches of that earthiness. And yeah. in fact... What age did you say this was 13? This is 13 going on 14, 14 okay. potentially. 2009 to 2023. So really the peak, yeah. It, I mean, it would start, you know, leveling out and dropping but off. Still, but, but it would be up there for Ardmore. Yeah. You know? oh, I've so, got 15, 16 plus year old casks that are more peaty than this. Yeah, sure, for sure. So I wonder if some of them are peated to different levels. That's what I'm sorry. As, so as a super they, geek, I'm thinking about what the peat levels of Ardmore yeah, normally are. So I believe Ardmore, they're about 45. A no, 40, uh, what PPM? PPM. No, no. Ardmore's much lower. Ardmore's about, I think, from memory, is about twelve to fourteen. Really? No, yeah. it's Ooh. low. Really? It is low. I'm going to Google this now because I'm fascinated. I've obviously got it wrong. Yeah, that's I don't know. So I don't know if that's. I, I can't remember if that's um, malt PPM or post distillation PPM, but it is quite low. <laughs> and some of them the really, of it, yeah. yeah, some of them really quite show peak. Fourteen. Quite heavily. Fourteen. I, hey, that's that's after. I do know what I'm talking about. Oh, no, because they all the, the no, measurements no, no, normally no, no, before, no. isn't it? No, 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 obviously. no. It's barley. It's the barley. Barley. Four, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, fourteen of course. parts per million. Really? Wow. Yeah. I always that would drop off even more through the distillation. Higher. Yeah. They don't. They don't go. The thing is, they don't get much reflux. Right. In okay. their in their stills because their right. stills are. I don't know if you know about that. that. I'm such a nerd when it comes to this. So if you want to switch off from my talk, please feel free. No, I'm, I'm but, done uh, here. But Ardmore have got like the thickest base of their stills. It takes forever to warm them up because they were the second last distillery to go away from coal. Right. So they've got these thick, thick bases that get no reflux because all of a sudden it spikes and then yeah. it's it's, it's going it. through the lineup. Yeah. So they kind of get quite textured, quite heavy. That's why it's quite meaty, like sort of. And I think it's also why their peat tastes so. I think Aldmore show their show their peat 
as actual product, as I actually earth, you know, burn earth more yeah. than most distilleries, which yeah, yeah, I love. Yeah, yeah. As not... you said, it's dirt in the mouth. Yeah. And I just think they're great at that. They're yeah. not worm tub, are they? Are... They don't have worm tub, no. No, 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 no. So I was just looking, 12 to 16 parts per million. So I was well off. Thank you for being here, Joe, and setting us right. But you can see why. <laughs> Giving the people at home the correct fucking information. <laughs> I was so far off. But yeah, no, but Joe's right. There is actually, there is, you're so, so right. There is such a small amount of reflux. And I think that that kind of exactly that turf esque yeah. style, it just shines through in such a beautiful way. Um, I think it's why it's so decisive, why it's so marmite as a right as a, as a dram. Yeah. Some people hate our water. for sure, especially IBs or single cars. People look at me like, "Why are you bringing this to me?" And I'm like, I'm, "Trust me, I'm going to take you on a journey." <laughs> to be fair, it was someone that is massively into whiskey, but does drink whiskey. I bought them a bottle of Arden for Christmas, and they've given it to me back. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't like it, you know. It was too, and I think in our introduction you know? into beat episode, which again, guys, probably isn't out yet, but it will be coming up. So stay tuned. We put Ardmore at the end. You know, we started out with a Highland Park, and then went on to Springbank, and kind of got from light heavy to oily, and then we built up to the Ardmore because, again, as I think I said in the episode, Ardmore can put people yeah. off mm -hmm. you know it's not for everyone and the last thing that we want to do especially for any new whiskey drinkers that are tuning in and watching is put them off so you know whilst i'm thoroughly i think we're all thoroughly into this yeah it's fucking delicious right i know it's really really good stuff ardmore is always a favorite of mine but if you're new to whiskey and you're not sure about those peaty earthy rich and bold flavors maybe stay clear of this one you know whiskey is such a subjective and personal thing yeah it, it can't be for everybody but if you are looking for that turf in the mouth that rich and thick smoke in fact this isn't a, again this isn't a typical armor there as i'm now as it's opening up in my glass it's getting a little bit more there mm -hmm. uh, i think if you were to leave it for 15 20 minutes it yeah. would probably be there more again but it's a much lighter sweeter and very and again the madeira just compliments yeah. it beautifully. I think it's woven. I can't believe this is only 18. Like you guys are sourcing some seriously <laughs> fucking great casks. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm annoyed. I feel like sometimes in episodes, it's good to have like a something that we bag on a little bit. I have not found you know, any faults in any of these thus far. It's funny There's you say that because I'm always it. a bit worried. And Joe, we are very honest here. And I think that's why the channel, you know, people like the channel. Um, and, you know, I had no doubt that you would bring some great whiskies. However, you are always a bit nervous about if you don't like something, we're going to say it. And like you said, so far, like there's bang not, after bang uh, after bang in whiskey. There's not a bad note. There's no. not an off note. You know, if you look at it, and again, you guys do quite a few tasting events, don't you? Yeah. It's a big part of what you, like you said at the beginning, yeah. of what you do. I would highly recommend you go along to a tasting event, particularly if it's hosted by Joe here. <laughs> but anyone at the Berries team, I'm sure, could lead you through some of their wonderful whiskies in a beautiful way. And I think that what you've got is such a diverse range, such a wonderful and interesting journey of whiskies. And, and again, we talk about the fact that this is a seasonal release. I now want to come along to a tasting event for, you know, your summer whiskeys, your winter. winter. The winter whiskey. Oh, yeah. You're, <laughs> we want those rich fucking if filthy. That great galaxy is your spring <laughs> release. I want to see what's happening at Christmas time. A hundred percent. You're on the same page as me there, Stevie. We have absolute filthy. And does it work like that, Joe? You, is it a continuous thing? It, or is this just, the? Is it, sorry, is this a first spring release? Is this something you do every No, season? no. So we've been doing our spring releases since... 2020, end of 2020, okay, okay. early 2021. Mm. I think we started with winter that came out January 2021, yeah. if I remember rightly. Because we've been, as a bottler, we've been bottling spirits uh, for about 200 years, we think. Mm. Um, our sort of the oldest bottle that we know of, that we have in our records, is um, 1853. Really cool. Um, and, but we and have... What is that? Sorry, Joey. That is, I, we don't know. Okay. It literally it's just a whiskey. Says, it says <laughs> Scotch malt on the label. Cool. Right. Um, distilled uh, 48, bottled 53. Um, we found it genuinely at the back of a cupboard. 
uh, because this is what our... I don't think the family are particularly careful. They keep finding stuff at back of cupboards and like, oh, this is this is really old. Like they once, uh, about 10 years ago, they opened up, they found they had a storeroom uh, where they had some some of the archives that did survive and some bottles and stuff like that. Right at the back of it, when they were clearing it out, they found a case of green chartreuse, which uh, they sent a photo to the chartreuse family because I think they're friends. Right. Um, and they went... <clears throat> And we think that's the oldest case of chartreuse in existence. Oh my God. And they came for dinner. And they were like, yeah, it is. So one got opened over dinner. Uh, one bottle it got put into our into our cabinets, our archives, and the rest went back to chartreuse's The berries cupboard sounds like <laughs> Narnia for a whiskey geek. <laughs> Fuck it out. And the fact that you keep discovering things. You know, yeah, there must be some... <laughs> oh, <laughs> doing this, one of them. Well, you've been to, to, to the shop, you yeah, know. Yeah, like, right. you, really there's ridiculous. probably cubby holes and, you know... Uh, you know, uh, cupboards that have been probably nailed up. That, that yeah. and there's probably just the treasures, crannies, yeah, yeah hidden sitting bits there, pieces. waiting to be discovered. Yeah. And what? also, you've got bottles sitting on the bottom of the bloody Atlantic Ocean in the Titanic. Yeah, yeah, that's so cool. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, have you ever thought about going down and rescuing those well, so I sixty-eight did. cases? You had? so sixty-nine cases sure. of mainly single state champagne um and Macallan whiskey so we're heading off to uh manhattan and they went down i know it's an expensive um, you know uh rescue operation but those bottles if they were still intact yep um <laughs> would go no don't tempt to mate we're gonna know. get our scuba license we're gonna go <laughs> <All right, mate. laughs> I, I, I will swim down before you <laughs> I've, it's been gonna talking, become a race. I've been talking about this for five years <laughs> Who's going to implode first? Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? I don't I don't feel as confident after recent years. No, no, definitely not. I'm going to have a word with my uh, my friend James Cameron, you know, try and get down there definitely. in his slightly more expensive. But there's just little <laughs> bottles turning up and history buried and yeah, it's it's mm. it's, it's amazing. It really is. Um, so what happened with those bottles of of that you you found? Did so you... they they just they get put in a locked cabinet, right? Which okay. is now locked. It was unlocked for a while. Does I any of that get opened ever? No, or... that w- that way won't. Well, I don't think it will be drinkable. Because uh, you're um, sorry, remind me uh, the first level down. You've got that lovely display behind. Yeah, the, the family reserve. Yeah. The family reserve. Those bottles get opened every now and then for special yep. occasions. Yep. The family um, when they they want to celebrate and yep, do yep. something. Yep. Okay. Okay. And sometimes the staff gets invited to this. I, I yeah. I got told when I started that uh, if you work for the company for twenty years, you get invited for dinner, um, and you get to choose one of the bottles. Oh. I have that's found out that that is not true. Oh, <laughs> Damn it. nineteen. <laughs> years in <laughs> I was like I only had another 15 years to go and yeah. I, I knew which bottle I wanted <laughs> that's gas crack that's a very good way of retaining your yeah. employees right that's true that's yeah. true so yeah, there's we got bottles there, but then some of our um so um basically our spirits don't get opened because they are time capsules. Sure, sure. Um they are absolutely like we have in that same cupboard we have like pre phylloxera um wow, cognac. So cool. cognac that before the the phylloxera pest ravaged um really Europe. Cool. Um yeah, so we've got yeah, bottles yeah. there, we've got um we've got like, chartreuses and stuff like this that all so you know just sit in our cupboards which, proper relics just, yeah, yeah absolutely yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You, know, you can easily think of berries as a museum yeah because you walk in i mean you've you've wandered around have you ever had the tour uh yeah. not no no well, you no, have no. to have to come in I, I know, i'm right, sure we'll find something tasty at the end definitely <laughs> Definitely. Probably that. <laughs> no, um, I, yeah, I but... don't even want to know what your insurance bill is, to be honest. Oh, well, I don't want to know either. Filthy. I'd probably be a lot more careful with the antique furniture if I did know. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously you guys started off in coffee. Yeah. That, that was your thing. Have you ever done anything with whiskey and coffee? Either, you know, uh, coffee beans and whiskey or equally, um, you know, whiskey... Uh, or, or coffee finished whiskey or most people call it whiskey <laughs> no unfortunately um, not yeah. even scotch yeah no I know That's we we, we uh, yeah luckily okay. we do have uh, cars from all over the world world whiskies uh, so we could do something we have never done whiskey and we do do a coffee liqueur uh, oh, you do okay. in our shop, you know, a bit of a. It's only available on the shop. It's a bit of a callback, just to a our, nod, to our history. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it is delicious. Um, mm-hmm. I think we're sort of between bottlings um, at the moment, but I'm sort of... surprised you aren't still selling coffee beans. Yeah, I know. You know? Um, yeah, we used. To... I mean, I know you're busy enough, but yeah, we did, for a few years ago we did do tea and coffee in the shop, but. Okay. 
uh, no one was coming in to actually buy tea and coffee, so we we're like, yeah, we'll <laughs> move away from shame. That. Fair enough. Yeah, that shame. is a shame. Yeah. yeah. If I was uh, more London based, I would definitely be doing. This. But yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. But yeah, but I sort of you know coffee coffee barrel finished whiskey. You know. Yeah, you're seeing them pop up a little bit more now. Those sorts yeah. of experimental things. But as Jake says, you know, uh, yeah. you can't if it's Scotch anyway. You can't uh, can't mess with the SWA, mate. You know nope. to it. Yeah. <laughs> Very good, cool. Some wonderful whiskies. I'm, I'm looking to see if I can trip you up here. Come on, what have we got? Uh, Let's so, see. Are any of them gonna fall short? Uh, I don't think so. Just so we've got our, uh, we've got two more bottles, um, and this next one is our last whiskey, and we're gonna go to the Nordic country of Sweden uh, now, cool. and our friends up at High Coast. Okay. Um. Uh. And yeah, this one is a little bit special, so I'll just uh, open it up and we'll give it a go. Cool. I'm interested. I have to say, we've actually we had a couple of samples through from this distillery, Stevie. Oh, <laughs> and they were all the best. It wasn't from the distillery. This is Personally, a private. This client, is a private right? client who reached out to us with some casks, and unfortunately, whilst we would love, we're always keen to work with private individuals. They were very young, casks, though, if I remember. Bottlings, and they're ten years old. Were they? Nearly. Okay. If not, I think one was nine and one was 11 or something like that. Fair enough. Fair enough. But they weren't overly impressive. So, uh, tried stuff from here before and it was great. But well, yeah. Educate me. Is this a quite a new, I know 10 years old, but is it fairly new distillery in the big scheme of things? Or uh, I think, so, so, High Coast used to be called Box Distillery. Okay. Um, until, a, until they got told they had to change the name. Uh, sure. So they're called, they're, they're, the distillery is still called Box. Um, it's named after. A, so basically it's in an old wood mill because the high coast region used to be the uh, forestry region of Sweden uh, so there used to be plenty of wood yeah, mills <laughs> yeah like loads of mills and stuff like that um, and they so they opened up this distillery in the high coast region which is sort of northwest northwest of Sweden um, just on the edge of the Arctic Circle um, and they have been going around since I think about 2008 okay Cool. 2010, I think it is. So they're no, not. I was going to say 2010 ish, but I don't know. I yeah. follow them. Sure, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, they 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 make uh, their their distillates go from very light, um, light and saline all the way up to sort of heavily peated. This is their heavily peated style. Ooh, um, love a good they uh, they whiskey. sort of they say their styles reflect the four um, the four walls of their distillery because on one side you've got the coast. Uh, one side you've got a glacier river, um, one side you've got a forest, and another side you've got a mountain. Oh, oh yeah. So they they try and they try and fill this one. This one is out of the uh, the the forest um, called uh, they call under their brand they call it timber or timber. Yeah. Um, and it is beautiful, high sort of um, highly peated whiskey. Uh, they very much they like their peat styles from like the um, uh, from the west coast. Um, Kilhoman is the ones that they style their stills on okay, cool. and their peats, but they're actually sort of process of making their whiskey. They really like what the Japanese are doing. Very, very clear wort, ultra clear wort, very quick cooled. Um, they claim they have the coldest cooling water in the world of whiskey because it comes straight out of a glacier That's from an Arctic circle. What a claim to yeah. have. Cool. They are very also cool. the most northern distillery in the world. They sit exactly on the 63 degrees longitude latitude whichever the one that goes the equator up <coughs> way um so they sort of they really use that sort of geography to sort of you know bring it out um and this is their their peated whiskey um which is is absolutely amazing and then we've actually done a finish on this because we i'm felt, looking at this yeah yeah i saw I... lock and Dahl. really what a fucking finish <laughs> I mean, Lock and Dahl casks are hard enough to find mm -hmm. anyway to then be getting one and, oh, let's use this as a finishing cask for an already peaty whiskey. Yeah. I like it a lot. Felt like it needed a little bit more body, a little, just a bit more dry. We right. Felt it may have been a bit light on that, um, sort of on that, on that sort of, you know, finishing for the age. So we thought, you know, put it in that cask, give it a bit of a, you know. 59.8% again. The alcohol is sitting so well. Mm -hmm. I uh, can't slay you on any of them, Joe. They're all just hitting the spot here. I was a bit nervous when you said this is what we tried. 
I know, I'll right? Yours, and, and as was I when I saw, well, just before we started filming, <laughs> I'll be honest with you, Joe, we saw the lineup and that was the one I was like, oh, okay, if I'm not going to like one of them, that's going to be the yeah. one I'm not going to I like. thought that was going to be the case because you brushed over it very quickly when yeah. you're like, oh, why you not to show him <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Craig Ellicott, you're amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. I do. Oh, I love it. Oh, sw oh sweetie. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So oh, sweet. Cool, cool. <laughs> Look, like I say, I've tried stuff from High Coast before and I've enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I haven't been blown away, but I've enjoyed it. Unfortunately, we were sent some casks by a, pirate, by a private individual and yeah, we really didn't enjoy them. And again, look, I don't like being negative about whiskeys. It's not my aim, you know, to set up a distillery and start producing whiskey. It's not easy, you know, especially when you're looking outside of Scotland to start yeah. creating regions and, and global whiskeys. Sweden, we get the world over now. It's amazing. Yeah. And I have so much respect and admiration for people who go out and try and do these things. So I never want to be down, particularly when it comes outside of Scotland. Um, but we just really didn't enjoy these drams. Already, though, again, it's fascinating that you've decided to put this in an ex Lock and Dahl cask. Yeah. I would probably buy it, even without tasting this, on that detail alone. I'm a massive laddie fan and a bit of a geek, and we're always talking about Rins and Lock and Dahl being mm -hmm. the kind of unknown and unsung heroes from Brick Laddie. Um, but again, 59.8%. <laughs> just exceptional. It's really, it's light and easy. And sorry, you were just saying that, that it was almost, yeah, like a light f finish and there wasn't maybe, which is why you chose the Lock and Dahl cast. I believe so, yeah. I still think that now, as it sits in my glass here today, it's surprisingly light for a peated whiskey that's been finished in a Lock and Dahl cask that's nearly 60 fucking percent. <laughs> it's like, this is too easy. This is, yeah. this is, it's incredible. It's an oddity. Reminds me of the, the just the cream in the middle of custard cream Ooh. biscuits, you know, mm -hmm. with a little bit of smokiness, you know, but you're right. I was expecting very heavy peat because you said, you know, it's peated and then the Lock and Dahl. But no, it, it it very again like the Ardmore. It's just very toned down, and the sweetness is much more present. Mm. Um, and I like it. <laughs> I was worried. <laughs> not gonna lie. I really just because it. my first experience was, as we say, we won't harp on about that. But yeah, but no, thank God. You know, they they do put out a good spirit. Mm. And for sure, That's you guys actually, wouldn't. You that guys, was your first experience with Ico. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have ever touched it again. Right. You know. That's a sh and so, and that's I'm a naive. So glad that you've then. That's a done. naive outlook, I know. But um, at the same time, you guys wouldn't bottle something that wasn't good, right? You so um, yeah. It's beautiful. It's very well balanced, and it is. It's super light, and there's not. I think I could sit here with it, and I could find lots of depth. Yeah. As it opens up. To me, the thing that's really just really wonderful, it's kind of soft vanillins and 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 a little bit fudgy, but it's that real heap of smoke. Yeah. And I almost feel like a char, I feel like a dragon here. Just as I swallowed it and I breathe out through my nose, that smoke just engulfs all of my senses. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that what you've done with the Lockendal cast, because it is that real Lockendal style, is it's just beautiful you've incorporated two pt styles and just almost welded them together you know yeah and it is just a wonderful rich thick smoke that i feel is just like i say it's engulfing all of my senses as i'm breathing in and out now it's still there but the, the rest of the whiskey is it's it's very light it's very yeah. easy it's very sweet it's very gentle you know I'm like, uh, I feel like the dragon in Shrek, you know, just this friendly. <laughs> Not the Sean Connery one out of, uh, I was going to say Braveheart, uh, Dragonheart. <laughs> no, I, I can't. Joe, you must remember. Different films. Yeah. <laughs> for sure, for sure. But it's just that really, it's it's easy going. It's approachable. It's lovely. Yep. But it's gentle smoke, a rich and thick, but gentle smoke. Yeah. It's delicious. It really is, isn't it? Really it's delicious. Yeah. It's, I think it's a great example that, what world whiskies are doing. I think the yep. Nordic region uh, is it's something that we have actually sort of, you know, highlighted and worked with. We've had our two um, Nordic uh, 
uh, releases, Nordic 1 and Nordic 2, which did a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. which was the love child of our former spirit creator, a guy called Johnny McMillan, who uh, loved what they were doing. So we started highlighting it. And on the back of that, we've got some extra casks. This Highland, uh, this High Coast um, is one of them. And it's just, it's fascinating to see what they're doing because they are following the Scotch method. Yeah. Uh, they very much are. They don't want to divert away from that. But what the people are doing, especially in Sweden, um, people like I are really sort of a different, unique taste on it. Well, then they're, they're experimenting, right? Because they're yeah. they're not um, sort of Confined. by any yeah. rules. You yeah. can do what you like. Yeah. So on the um, way over on the way over here, I was listening to your um, your wireworks, your uh, White Peak um, episode. Um, which love White love. Peak. Big shout out yeah, White Peak. Yeah, yeah cuz we cool. we did a bottling of theirs uh, cool. uh, uh, last year um as part of a release of English whiskies we did. And they were saying exactly the same thing. Is the fact is that there is a world of exploration you can do um until you know as eventually at some point you want to protect that. But right. at the moment when you're a young region, especially the Nordics, when you've got that play have fun, really experiment, Definitely. do what you want to do. And I think, you know, High Coast are doing that. High Coast have got, I, th I, I wouldn't be surprised if they're not got the aims of becoming one of the sort of the classic sort of distilled world whiskies. Um, they have got a lot of drive and a lot of passion. Um, and, you know, it's definitely one one to watch. Um, you don't see it as much in the UK yet, but. No, as I say, I never heard of it before. I tried it with Jake and then today, yeah. Uh, that second would time. Your mind there. That's, yeah. that's I good. would question what's in those casks now. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, the longer this sits in my glass, not yours, the, the more not lock and dial esque it becomes. Mm. It really is kind of transporting me to either that. It's, you're all romantic about that, aren't you, mate? Port Charlotte, yeah. lock and dial. Yeah. I mean, all of it, Rins, Port, you know, yeah. but Port Charlotte, lock and dial. Mm. But it's just, it's special. Um, so did you boss a lock and dial? Is that how you had the cask or? I don't remember bottling a lock and dial, okay. but we do do a lot of like customer exclusives worldwide. Okay. So there may have been one that sort of. It's interesting that you've got the cask just hanging around. Yeah. I, had, I literally have no idea. I, this, this may have actually been a finish done by iCoast and ended up with us. Right. Okay. The, I, I don't know. I, sure. sort of, I was waiting for how long this is, but I don't know anything about this. Okay, sure. Um, it may be that. It may have been that we had a cask and we've done at some point. I should probably should probably have a Google. They normally pop up on uh, on, on Whiskey Base or something like that to yeah, find I'm, out. You can find um, out in a couple but, of yeah, seconds on where, Google. Where, where, wherever, wherever this cask has come from, I'm so glad it's ended up in our sort of possession. Definitely. Um, I really want to know what's happened to it now, actually. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> if we put something else into that, actually, that's a question. Keep an eye on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. I think it's interesting when you use peated casks or, or casks that have held peated whiskies in them for finishing other whiskies. In all honesty, it could be, again, it's kind of similar to rum. It could be a real hit or a miss for me. Yep. A lot of ex Lafroy casks, a lot of ex Ardmore casks. And then you get, a lot, a lot of the time, actually, unpeated whiskies finished in them. Um, and sometimes it just really misses the mark for me yep. it really doesn't it just it's a, this this balance you know again we talked earlier about mm. casks of sherry or wine or whatever and it's almost like this oh am i drinking sherry or am i drink, you know this complete disjointment of whiskey and and the finish and again the smoke can sometimes be completely unbalanced and just out of the picture and a separation between the two and i think that this is a wonderful expression of how you can use a peated cask to finish in this case, a peated whiskey yeah. to amplify that peat, to add something to that peat, to really give it that little bit longer finish. Um, I'd love to try what it tasted like before it went into the lock and down cast to see how mm. much of an effect it has had. I believe it's had a lot of, a, yeah. of an impact because like I say, I'm really tasting a lot more Port Charlotte and lock and dal sort of flavors as it sits in the glass and you know i'm finished now unfortunately i've got a little bit more <laughs> i'm saving some of these just hoarding all the switched samples. off the camera i'm going home <laughs> yeah, i have a lovely afternoon to myself yeah i know no, stay away joe no, i know you brought them you've given them to me now you can't be rude and take them away okay um, this is why you always pull the drafts out yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i just think it's a it's a great it's a great example of that it's it's again great liquid Great wood, a company and, and people that know exactly what they're doing. And it just shines through every single dram.
Let's see. Come on. Can you get seven for seven? Are we, are we gonna go? Are we gonna go for the last one. And this is not a whiskey. Did you say? So this is this whiskey. one. This one is a rum. This is a single cask rum. Cool. Um, okay. Cool. Um, from uh, from Guyana and from the famed Diamond Distillery. Cool. Right. So before we go into this, um, our rums we treat our rums very much like our whiskies. Cool. We want to sort of you know have that character of wood, but we also want people to sort of know what we're doing with our whiskies and trust that if they want to try something rum. I mean, I think so. I think I read a fact the other day that ninety percent of rum in the UK is still drunk in cocktails or mixed. Right, for sure. I and it is, it is it is not a category where people sit and enjoy aged rum as you would whiskies, as you know, sort of the American whiskies are coming over. Even sort of cognac is having a resurgence. Yeah. Um, and I think it's real shame. We think it's a real shame. We have a long history of working with rum, um, and I think there's some amazing stuff out there. And the Diamond Distillery is one of them. It uh, also goes under the name of the Demerara Rum Distillery. Yeah. Uh, they use Demerara sugar, which is probably one of the best in the world. Uh, they fun fun fact: they are the only rum distillery and one of the only distilleries left in the world that still uses wooden stills. Right, amazing. So, so they have Very got, cool. they've got copper, they've got copper bases, but yeah. the rest of the still is they have three stills. Uh, they are all made of wood. Uh, they have like a pot still. Uh, they have a, a column still, which I have no idea how that works. And then they have like a hybrid one and they use it. And what happens is because you've kind of got that cooling element of the woods, you get a lot of reflux, but you get a lot of texture and a lot of flavor. There's a lot of stuff sure. added to it. Um, and it just makes for a really exciting rum. I'm thinking back now. I don't drink huge amounts of rum, but I have tried a good amount of rum from this <laughs> distillery. And I'm now thinking back, it's like, that's fat. I didn't know that at all. Mm. That's really, really fascinating. What a great piece of information to have. Uh, one thing that always gets me about rum, and I know Ian's not here today, I'm sure one of the things he would ask, and sorry, Joe, I'm going to put you on the spot here again. Do you know where this was aged? So most of this aging was a uh, tropical maturation. Okay, great. Yeah, and then it sort of came over to to us uh, and then probably a on so this is a 2013 so probably it's had at least eight years tropical maturation great and the last couple of years by the time it's come come over and UK. sat sat in in our rum warehouse cool um yeah fantastic because this is the thing again you know we talked about the swedish sort of category and and these new world whiskies and they've got a little bit more room to play there's mm -hmm. not so many rules and regulations you know and that can be great and equally with rum there's not as many rules and regulations it can leave you open to playing around and having some crack and doing some really inventive and interesting things. At the same time, I feel like the great thing about the SWA is that it drives providing information for the customer. Yeah. How long has it been matured? What sort of wood has it been matured in? Let's give us as much information as is possible. And with rums, because of that lack of trans, uh, because of the lack of sorry regulation, there's also sometimes a lack of transparency and oh, yeah. tropical aging versus you know aging it here in the UK or a, it could make a huge impact. Oh, you yeah. Know? yeah, like a huge impact. And having that information as a consumer, again, you know, for me, somebody who started off with IBs and and who's always looking to find out more and take information from one dram into the next and rum whiskey, rum matured whiskies. It's a category I struggle with, yeah. you know, but the more I learn about rum and then the more I can learn about the casks that are used for finishing whiskeys when it's when it comes to rum casks, the more I'll then be able to go, okay, well, there's a good chance I'll like that because of X, yeah. Y, and Z experience yeah. beforehand, you know? And I think that's the only thing about the rum category that bothers me sometimes that is missing is that information, that clarity. Yeah. So it's wonderful for you guys, obviously, having your great connections, having these incredible rums to be able to share that information. Yeah. I mean, it is the big problem. Like, it, I can probably, with most of the whiskeys we've tried, I can probably with a bit of work and a bit of talking to contact is find out what's still in like a in a still house that the whiskies have come from this i can tell you as much as i can but i don't the, the problem with the rum industry is that not many people go straight to the distilleries it's all brokers it's all uh bought from holland and liverpool and yeah. sort of you know it's a real shame because as you said the one thing i think holding it back is that lack of transparency and we are trying to change that we are trying to you know work directly with distilleries and actually kind of get more of that information um but until then sort of you know we know we're going to get great class we try and 
Um, most of the time we can only label it under sort of, you know, the country because even though we can tell you where it's from, this one's a bit different. Also, there is only one distillery in this in this country. Right, yeah. <laughs> so easy to sort of tell. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Um, Pinpointing it doesn't take yeah. all that much work. Definitely. It's always nice to taste rum like this. Got something you, a bit uh, different. Well, I just mean um, just on its own, yeah. you know, because obviously, as you say, you know, was it 90% of rum is drunk in cocktails? And I can believe that growing up. I loved rum, spice rum. Yeah. Of course, I never drunk it straight. You know, it was right. just not frowned upon, but it just was something you was didn't the norm. do. It wasn't the norm. For sure. Being in the whiskey industry, I love tasting any spirits just completely on on their own to yep. begin with. We went to a gin tasting or a gin event, you know, tasting gin on its own, a whole different experience, especially when it's good gin. When we had Chim in uh, an episode, I think he, we finished oh, off nice. with a few rums, tasting those on their own. And when they're rums distilled like this, uh, this is cast strength? This is cast strength. Mean, it must be, yeah. yeah. Sorry, this is yeah. At you know? the wonderful cask strength of 59.5. So it's still 2013, bottle 2023. So we're going to imagine a nine, if not 10 yep. year old rum. Uh, no finish. It's just a straight barrel maturation at 59.5%. Yep. So this is more than more likely to be a American oak um, barrel, um, cool. probably virgin, maybe uh, bourbon. So they sort of Caribbean uses a mixture of the two, I mm -hmm. believe. Um, yeah. It's just, it tastes more bourbony to me. Yeah. Yeah, it's got, it's got, you can taste the corn in that. Um, there's always, almost this like kind of like sweet rubber, rubberiness in it as well, you know? Right, yeah. That's you, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know exactly like, what you mean. Kind of like a me, balloons. Balloons, right, yeah. yeah <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I know, on the nose, I know more what you mean. Yeah. For me, it's kind yeah. of a, um, it's like, uh, you know, French bread, like eggy, eggy bread, French toast. Oh, really? But with demerara sugar on it. Okay, I was going to say I mean? or, like, or maple syrup or something. No, but yeah, it's the sweetness of it yeah. to me. And again, sweet and savoury. I know that they use demerara sugar here, and it's yeah, probably yeah, yeah. maybe a little bit yeah. of a placebo, but it's that sweetness. It's as if you've kind of made eggy toast, and you've then put you know caramelised some sugar on top of it. <laughs> That's such an <laughs> interesting <laughs> note. Lovely. Yeah. But, but I, I can see that. Do you know what I mean? I, like, I know what you that. mean on the forefront. Yeah. On the nose, there is a, almost a little rubberiness to it. I quite like that. And again, oh, yeah, yeah, me too. Me Jake too. or something, you know, you do rubber burning. And so people are like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Sounds awful. Yeah. I really like that note. And it's a great note. But it's not like a rubber tire. No, 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 no. It's more of a, but yeah. I know what you mean exactly. So sort of lead, leading to all sort of like, you know, the, the, the rubber eraser sort of on the back of the pencil type thing. Yes, like, exactly. Like, it's a little bit waxy to me as well. Waxy. Right. But there yeah. is that, like, that's where I'm sat. I think the one thing I love about this distillery is they really show molasses character. Yeah. So we're talking sort of those rich, dark molasses sort of flavours. Absolutely. Um, thinking about it for, for any of your, your viewers that uh, or listeners that make Christmas cakes, that sort of lion's treacle that kind of comes out of the red tin. That's mm. what I get from this. Mm -hmm. There's a lovely bit of fruit that opens up. There is a, there's a fruit that you get in the Caribbean and West Africa called a sour sop. Yes. Imagine a tropical pie, like tropical pear, creamy. That's what I get from this as well. There is a beautifulness to this, some sort of like, guava i think there's a lot of fruit that kind of you have to go hunting for this because it's hidden behind that demerara sugar maybe that eggy bread type thing i do i, I, I maybe you've suggested that in my head but i definitely see no no no, no but no i i hear what you mean 100 percent. there is it does open up into that sort of yeah tropical fruit notes um and it is quite a, a viscous strap you know yeah. like you say that sort of treacliness it is it's quite mouth coating and rich not an overly long finish though no you know it's wonderful the way it really kind of takes over your senses and then it's one you know and just going back to what you said stevie sorry rums often used in cocktails mm. please guys try your rums just neat maybe not your captain morgan's you know but when you start getting into these really interesting you know like you're absolutely right the episode with Chima, he left us a bottle of the plantation rum and we'll drop in a, the, the link into the episode with Chima. You should definitely watch it if you haven't already. Um, but having your rums neat is a really wonderful experience. And equally, I know that we've tried all of these whiskeys here today and we always focus on whiskey as a neat sort of expression. Please, guys, get your whiskeys into some cocktails. Mm. Because again, so many of the whiskeys that we've tried here today 
would be a fantastic backbone. I would, I would argue all of them have something to offer for, for different cocktails. Especially that, that Craig, you know? would be a fantastic backbone to, to ice cream. Right, you oh, know, 100%, like a, 100%, man. You know, you learned well, young Padawan, absolutely. <laughs> uh, no, definitely, definitely. But this is it. I think, you know, so often Pair we them look with at things, whiskeys you know? and we're thinking, oh, but there are rules associated. I must drink this neat and I cannot have it have any ice and I have to be wearing fucking slippers and a smoking jacket and have a cigar <laughs> with it and I must be a, an old man. No, no, please. <laughs> enjoy them how you want to enjoy them. And espresso, this is the spring release. Yeah. Sometimes in spring, you want that sort of, you know, a bit of a highball or a little bit, something a bit different. Please, guys, try your whiskeys in different ways. It's wonderful to experiment and toy around. Once you found a liquid that you like, putting it into a cocktail, it could be a wonderful way to sort of amplify that whole experience. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Also, a lot of these, a lot of these trams go really well with sort of foods that you get around. Definitely. Uh, that, 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 that Craig Ellicke is going to be great with if you're having like a, a Easter lamb. Um, mm -hmm. I think it would go really amazingly. That uh, I've just thought, and I need to try this when I get home. Uh, St. David's Day is coming up tomorrow. Yeah, uh, it is. Yeah. That with some like Welsh cakes, some of that sort of sweet, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. dried yeah, yeah. fruit. That would be, yeah. yeah. It's definitely, I think, you know, as experiment. You said, there, is, you know? there is a world. People ask me, like, do you hate me if I put ice in whiskey? And I'm like, no. Like, why? Like, Enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. Do what you want. These as long as you don't make me that's... drink it, it's yeah. fine. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But no, completely that, Joe. I, you know? I, I think. I think. Yeah, I think people get sometimes can get a bit stuck, and these products are, are just meant to be enjoyed. Enjoy them however however you want. If you mix it with Coca Cola. Maybe do it behind my back. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Uh, other other got, Kona brands are available. <laughs> Ian is normally in your seat. And he his rider is a packet of 12 bites and a Coke Zero. Mm. And I personally, I cannot stand Coca-Cola. I can't stomach it. It's just the smell of it even is revolting. But equally, I have no idea how he's picking notes out of whiskey when he's... But he's got so much sugar on his palate, I know. You know like, what I mean? Hang on, there was a rider. <laughs> Damn it. I know, I know, right? You missed out, sorry. Too late. Uh, <laughs> for next time, Jay, what would your rider be? What would it be? Yeah. I'm all of that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. But, but this is the thing, I think, you know, exactly that, Joe. Enjoy it how you want to enjoy yep. it. Just because one person doesn't. Have, it's like whiskey anyway is so simple or rums they're all so subjective one mm. person may like something you may not and then vice versa and 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 toy around with it like stevie said have that experimentation dive into it get involved the important thing is that you're enjoying yourself responsibly and experiencing different things you know and i think that's a beautiful thing about whiskeys about rums is there are multiple experiences to have within any bottle what we've enjoyed here today might taste different in a different setting with different people. Yeah. Might taste different when you add food to it. Might taste different in a cocktail. And so all of a sudden, you buy a bottle of one of these whiskeys and you spend 50, 70, 100, whatever, however many pounds you spend on it. And all of a sudden you've got a multitude of experiences. And it's so worth the money, you know, it goes so much further. I think that's what's great about spirits as opposed to, you know, wines or, or other bits and pieces, you know, where you can kind of have maybe a little bit more of a, a singular experience. Spirits have such diversity and can be enjoyed in so many different ways. Um, I'm really enjoying this rum. It's yeah. A, it's a good one, right? It's a really <laughs> it's good one. opened up in the time. No, I'm really getting some like toffee, some proper toffee in the background of that. That's chewy show. almost. Chewy, yeah. Um, that and sort of a bit of a herbaceousness on top. It's yeah. When people say fudge, this is fudge for me. Yeah, uh, you know, very very sweet chewy fudge. Mm. What a beautiful selection oh. of samples you brought us, Joe. <laughs> you have not faltered at any point here. Oh, no, so well done. <laughs> I was a bit nervous when I was opening up the rum. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you've done exceptionally well. Um, all right, cool. Well, look, what we always do is we do a buy and we do a don't buy. Mm -hmm. I think as uh, the global ambassador for Berry Spirits, we're not going to put you on the spot there. Yeah. I'm sure you buy all of them, right? Oh, yeah. I have to stop myself from not actually. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, like, <laughs> I don't have enough room in my flat for all of the bottles. Even I if you've got a company I... discount, well, you're probably okay. not making yourself it's, broke yeah, spending yeah. all It's very money. clear that we love all of these whiskeys that are coming out in, in, in spring, right? Definitely. I think we should pick our top three and i have my top three ready 
Fair. You're, they're you're, all, well, what I like to do is I like to run through all of them from a that, price point of view so that everyone at home knows. <laughs> yep. So that, like we say, look, these are probably just going out now That's fine. as this episode goes live. So let's get some price points. Let's run through what we've enjoyed thus far. Let's give it a buy, don't buy. But then exactly, let's give it a top three, all three of us. And yep. that'll be a great way for you to get involved as well, Joe. So, <laughs> all right. So we started off with a Glenn Lossie, which was, I believe, a nine, maybe a 10-year-old Glenn Lossie. Yep. Watered down to 46%. What a wonderful, sweet, and easygoing way to get involved in springtime. Where are we at price point on that? 70 pounds? 70 pounds. 70 pounds. Stevie? As I said, mate, I'm going to do a top three because they're all buys. Okay. You know, it's a definite buy. Yeah. Definite buy. So 70 pounds on the Glenn Lossie 10 year old. We then moved on to the Knock Do, which was a 2012, 11 ish, 10, maybe 11 yeah. year old. Cool. Which was, uh, you know, again, uh, other than the Glenn Lossie, all of these are cask strength. The Knock Do came in at 58.4, 75 pounds, if I remember yep. correctly. Cool. Again, a definite buy. It's a really wonderful expression. Very stripped back distillate. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And I love your description of Krigalicki's younger brother. <laughs> yep. uh, cool. <laughs> definite buys there. Then we moved on to the Krigalicki. 90 pounds? 90 pounds. Stevie. Mate, I just told you I'm buying them all. It's just a buy? <laughs> Skip me. I want to get to my top three. Krigalicki for me. <laughs> now, this is an... Yeah, sorry. I, That's why I asked yeah, you, no, my I, guy. I, I, I'm I, I, sorry. I, 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 that Krigalicki is so fucking good. For the price point, it is a big oosh for me. And Sub I'm sure Joe pounds. will be an oosh. And it's an Sub oosh Sub 100 rounds. pounds. Yep. We are talking a seriously well-balanced whiskey <laughs> that is beyond its years. Yep. It's exceptional. Great cask selection. Margot wine. So interesting. So different. Krigalicki, not something that you see all the time now. And it's only going to get more expensive, guys. So for £90, I really think you've got a fantastic steal there. A definite oosh from both of us. Um, we moved on then to the Glengarry. Yep. We the Glengarry, which was finished After, in port. Yes, yes. I think yes. we did. Yep, we did. Yep. I'm not misremembering it. No, Don't no, make no, me no, look no, bad. Right. Glengarry, <laughs> finished in port. Talk to me. Uh, I oh, have... Port. It has not made it onto my cheat sheet. So I'm just going to quickly look through this. <laughs> <laughs> Glen Geary, Glen. Not a clue. Uh, probably about 90, 90, 100 pounds, I would guess. Okay, so 100 pounds, maybe a little bit less. Uh, again, it was really interesting. It was different for me. It's a definite buy. I'm not getting quite as excited as, as the Craig Alecky, but it's a <laughs> definite buy. You're buying it as well at that price? No, it's an ooze from me. It's an ooze from yeah, you. If it's under 100 pounds, yep. Absolutely a noose. It takes me back to being a naughty little kid at school and then leaving school and getting a bag of sweets for being naughty. So uh, we're a bold boy. Right? It was uh, they. It was. It, yeah, I love port finishes when they're done well. So it was hats off, well, Barry. Let yeah. me let me look up the price and I we can that's drop it in the comments underneath. Yeah, sure. yeah, that's fine. Yeah. And are these going to be available to buy online? Out of interest. So yep. Yep. So cool. So what will... we'll do is we'll make sure there's a link below so that you can buy all of these yep. online. Absolutely. And you can get your hands on them before anybody else, hopefully, because I'd imagine most of them being single cask, they're going to sell out fucking quickly. <laughs> uh, where did we go from the Glengarry? I'm now. So Glengarry, we went to the Ardmore. Ah, the Ardmore. The Ardmore. The which was 2009 a really Ardmore. interesting finish. Yeah. Really wonderful. Again, not your typical Ardmore for nope. me. Uh, how much is that one? So that one is uh, 96 pounds. 96 pounds for the Ardmore. Um, Madeira finish at 53.6%. Again, it's, it's, it's got to be a buy. I'm spending too much money here, mate. I need to start. I need to get another job. <laughs> Look at hell. Spending all of my money at berries. I, it's, it's delicious whiskey. It's a really strong buy. Wonderful, wonderful Ardmore and something a little bit different from me. Not quite as bolshy and in your face. Stevie? Yeah, it's a definite buy. Um, I, You know, look, I don't drink or have much Ardmore, but I'd love to have this in the cupboard, you know, especially for people that come around, try something a bit different. You don't see Ardmore too much in Indies, or at least I don't anyway. So, yeah, great finish. Strong buy. Cool. We went from the Ardmore to the High Coast? Yeah, went to the High Coast. High Coast, uh, obviously Sweden, putting out some great whiskies now, guys. Check them out. Uh, it's great to hear that actually you hadn't had a High Coast experience other than our, our bad one. So this is kind of turn things around i've had good ones before that's the thing so i hadn't been put off by that right um you know each cask is so different and sure. this is the thing guys particularly when you come to these sorts of single cask expressions it's such a wonderful and unique way of enjoying a just a split second of time for a distillery you know there are no two casks the same 
we have bought casks that are literally sister casks, number one and number two, that have been filled on the same date into the same type of wood that came from the same forest that had the same bourbon or sherry or whatever it was in before. They've been matured in the same warehouse for the same amount of time and they come out tasting so different, you know? So really don't sleep on these sorts of single cask releases. You are capturing something truly unique and different. Uh, and this High Coast was, again, great to hear that you're back on uh, the High Coast. I've been back. converted back. Yeah, cool. Uh, price. I, just, I, I thought it was wonderful. Where, yeah, I was just about to ask, where are we at price-wise? So uh, 110. 110 pounds. Okay. Oh, maybe not a buy. Okay. Ooh. He's he's at least wincing at the price a little bit. So not- this is a... Uh, uh, how old was it? Again? Uh, 2012. So 10, uh, maybe 10, 11, 11 year old. Yeah. 10, maybe 11 year old high coast. I think this is, this is again, a little bit more borderline for me. What pushes it over into just a buy <laughs> is the fact that it's got that lock and doll style. On it. Mm-hmm. And it really transports me to Brook Laddie. It's that poor Charlotte lock and dolly smoke. It's wonderfully balanced and gentle and soft, but the smoke really engulfs it. It's a buy. It's it's probably, I don't want to say my least favorite. That sounds negative. It's the one that I'm not as excited about. Do you know what I mean? I think it's really wonderful. um, And it's a beautiful whiskey. Uh, But we have to be honest here. It's still a buy for me at £110. Stevie, what are you thinking of? What in wince as such? Well, you were, I don't know, £110. I was expecting a little bit less. Okay. However, with the, uh, say, heritage of that Lock and Dial cask, I think it does maybe deserve that price point. And I think if I wasn't to buy all of the rest, which I am, I would go for that one. So I'm going to say buy. Okay. If I wasn't to buy all the others. For sure. <laughs> okay, okay. For sure. Penciled in buy. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh, sure. Jesus exactly. Christ. I'll tell you yeah. what, you've got all of our all of our savings here. <laughs> Talk about being a bold boy. You've got my fucking uh, my monthly... <laughs> <laughs> Tuppence there. And and finally, we went on to the Diamond Distillery, which is 2013 to 2023, 59.5. The thing about all of these whiskeys, Joe, that I have to say, they the alcohol just sits in the glass so well. The fact that they're all cask strength, whether they've been finished or, or not, in the case of, of this uh, Diamond Distillery rum, it's just such a beautifully well-balanced liquid in every single glass. It's wonderful. And again, guys, check out berries for tasting events because maybe buying into all of these bottles, you know, like me, you're thinking about my pocket money is quickly depleting. Uh, But if you can't buy all of them, you can only buy one or two. I'm sure you can get down to berries, get involved in a tasting event, try lots more. Uh, Where are we at price point on the diamond? So 125. 125. Okay. For the diamond. Again, rums is not something that I buy all that often. And it's not one that I would jump at as quickly as I would jump at pretty much all of the others. (laughs) It's it's just about a buy for me. One, mm. two, five. It's a really good rum. It's wonderful. It's got a lot going on in the glass, and I would be excited to own it. I wouldn't buy more more than one bottle. Whereas the Kragaliki, I'm going to see if I can fucking take all of your stuff. <laughs> I'm going to fight you for that bottle there before you leave. To be honest with you, mate. Uh, but no, this there's is... a lot of stuff between me and the door. It's yeah, I know, hard. right? I'm fucking. I've got an umbrella. I'm seeing what I can weaponize. Hopefully, here. I can try and knock over the sample of the old can of and distract you. Yeah. <laughs> but but no, look. I think you know, even at 125 pounds, it's it's good value for money, mm-hmm. uh, and I think that's what all of these drams here represent: good value for money, an independent doing really great expressions really well. So it's a buy from me, Stevie. Yeah, it's just a buy from me. Um, only because you well, first of all, you as you say, you can denote where the rums come from, you know, and, and put down all the details, which sometimes you don't get with rum. I don't often reach for rum, but to have and I don't have a rum in the, the cabinet, it would be great to have rum in the cabinet for when people come around and say, You like rum? Yeah, I love rum. We'll try it on its own. Yeah. Try At this percentage. Seriously good rum. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that deserves to be that bottle that yep. I have to be like, try this. And I'm sure everyone will be like, Jesus, this isn't rum as I know it, but it's yeah. great. Yeah. So yeah. That's exactly, is it? You couldn't have put it better. hundred percent. That's exactly where this rum belongs. Cool. So definite buys all round. A couple of ooshes as well. Ooh. Joe. Yes. Let's start with you, sir. <laughs> what are your top three? Let's start with number three. Number three. Oh, um, number three. I've got to go for the, uh, the not do actually for number three okay i think it really shows the distillate really well i think it shows a distillery that just isn't 
known, isn't sung, is barely ever seen. It's the first time I've ever seen an independent bustling um, of it. I think it's just, it's a fantastic sort of expression of what it is. Cool. I like it. Stevie, what's your number three step? Um, I'm going to go with the rum. Really? Yeah. Ooh, that's interesting. I it love is. it. Yeah. I wasn't expecting, that. I wasn't expecting yeah. it either. Cool. Yeah. For the reasons I said before, it's, it's, it's something different. Look, we can all pick our favourite scotches out and we are all spoiled, uh, you know, with the, uh, you know, options of, of, of scotches that we can drink. But as I say, rums don't come around that often for me. So that's why I'm picking it today as my third tier bottle. Cool. I like it. Cool. For me, I'm going to go for the Glen Lossie. Mm. It's the only one here today that's been watered down. And it's, again, I, you know, I slate sort of low strength whiskies. And it's not that this is low strength. It's 46. It's still holding its own. But it's just so beautifully balanced. There's a lot going on in that glass. You know, springtime, definitely there. I'd equally say, you know, if you're buying a bottle and you maybe sit on it for a while, this is going to be great in the summertime as well. Yeah. So this is, you know, this fits a, 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 a few different seasons uh, for all the right reasons. It's a great expression of Glen Lossy and it really impressed me. Um, so again, not only are you guys doing some great finishes, but you're actually getting the bottlings right in all ways. And I think the Glen Lossy was a really great example of it. So that's my number three. I think I know where our number ones are going all across the I, I, I think, I think. But let's go to number two. Yeah. Joe, where is your number two, sir? Well, I, I'm i actually surprised at myself here because I thought until about 10 seconds ago, I was going to go for the Glen Geary as my second. But okay. I think I'm going to have to go for the Arbor. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm dropping the I'm dropping the Glen Geary. <laughs> I am shocked. My, but, just thinking uh, about it, you know, it was really different it yes. was soft like soft peat that kind of earthiness comes through a little bit that Madeira cask is just I think what I love about Madeira cask it's not as sweet as your sherries or your ports it shows a bit of nuttiness I think it's sort of yeah I think it's putting itself in there at number two Ardmore at number two for Joe I love it okay mm -hmm. cool Stevie my sweet tooth is leaning towards the port finished um Glengarry Glengarry yeah. Right, yeah yeah I loved it I absolutely loved it took me back to a lot of time and that's whiskey for me you know that's what great it's great about whiskey sorry is it takes you back to a place and time sometimes yeah and it really did um yeah very sweet tooth loved it uh, as you say Joe showed the the distillery character and merged with that port really well so mm. yeah high number two for me that yeah love it Love it. I agree with you, Stevie. And going back, just the Ardmore for me was it was a close in place for number three. To be honest, it's really was it was something different. Uh, the Glen Lossie just really impressed me, though the fact that it, it hadn't been finished, it hadn't been touched. I just think it's a really wonderful expression, and you guys have given it such. You've given it everything it needs to show shine as a Glen Lossie, which is why I just edged out the Ardmore. Um, but other than the Ardmore, the only one that really shocked and surprised me today, and my number two, is the Glengarry as well. Mm. It was something that was challenging, that was different to what I was expecting, that gave me an experience that, to be honest with you, I've been in whiskey now for, what, nine plus years, I think. It gave me something entirely unique that I've never experienced before, that kind of real separation of 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 liquid that then very quickly became this symphony this full circle experience it's exceptional and i am stealing the idea of port finished glengarry <laughs> all time guys at the whiskey round we're gonna have some glengarry finished at port soon and it's all thanks to berries here today <laughs> well you've got to bottle what you like mate it's a really yeah, great you know. expression and this is the thing steve exactly that Obviously, as an independent bottler, I'm taking these thoughts and ideas and these expressions that I'm trying, and I'm using that information to then affect what we bottle. But for all of you guys at home, just because you're not an independent bottler, it's still great to get involved, particularly with independent bottlers like Berries, who give you a wealth of information about each and every expression so that you can then take that ex experience, take that information, and apply it to your next dram. Today, as Stevie and I and yourself, Joe, we all enjoyed that port finish Glengarry. It's something so different to your usual Glengarry, which would either be stripped back grassy or maybe a heavy sherry finish. Yeah. And knowing that, you can now start looking for similar style distillates in port casks. And I think that's what's so exciting about independent bottles. So number two for me is the Glengarry. I don't think we even need to ask. Are we just going to say it all at once? All at once, shall Three, we? Three, two, one. This is going to be Oh my gosh. Josh. 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 listen, I know that this is obviously the business you work for. You love all of these spirits and the way you've 
guided us through them today. I have to thank you so much. And I'm sure everyone at home is so grateful that you've come along and given us a really wonderful deep dive into berries. Again, guys, Joe was there with Ian over on the Whiskey Baron channel, and he gave us an incredible tour and insight into the history of Berry Brothers and Rudd. But today we've got to try what's upcoming. And we are so grateful for you sharing these drams with us today. I know that you love all of them, but that quick allergy. It, I mean, that's it a is, serious fucking that oosh. Was, that was worth waiting for. I was so glad that it was your first <laughs> time has today been as well. It's sitting on my shelf. It has been teasing me <laughs> I love since it. I got this this uh, this sample pack. And how um, many bottles have we got of that? Uh, that is, so we have got, there well, is. There's one there. 298 in existence. So I'll give you 150 quid. You're going to have to fight me outside <laughs> of berries in order to get your hands on one because I'm going to be there trying to get there's every not fucking bottle. A lot of bottles, yeah. Not very Bottles, a lot of bottles. Um, I am actually just a, a bit of a plug. Uh, so we have actually got an exciting thing that couldn't share with you when you were at our store. Okay. But we have got a new spirit store opening. Uh, the first time oh. ever. The first uh, time we've had an exclusive spirit store at Berry's. Number one St. James's. So on the wow. corner. Wow. Okay. Um, the reason why I'm saying this is the first two Thursdays of April when we open. We open at the beginning of April. I'm going to be doing some barrel top tastings with wow. these with these whiskies. Um, so <laughs> unless you guys have come and stolen all, <laughs> all of the Grey Galaxy. Don't products, bet against it. There's a very good chance <laughs> that happens. Uh, Hopefully we'll have uh, some open. Um, so any of your any of your watchers, listeners, want to come down, say hello, come and try some the stuff. The first two days in April, did you say? First two Thursdays. And first they... two Thursdays in April, guys. Make sure you get down. To Can you just turn up, Joe? Would yeah, you need to yeah, get that tickets? Is, that is very much. I will be cool. there from uh, 4 to 6.37, I think the opening hours are, uh, from 4 o'clock. First come, first Craig Allergy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Down, have a big chat. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so we have uh, got this exciting Oh, amazing. Speaker. Congratulations on that. Thank Congratulations for indeed. Cool. Fantastic. Uh, so, yeah, so and we will be doing events. So you mentioned our tastings. Have a look on bbr.com. Uh, we're doing, I think I've got a couple of things uh, in the diary. Fantastic. Uh, I can't remember at the moment. I've had seven drops. <laughs> we, we, we won't judge you for that at all. We will make sure that we speak with you before this yeah. goes live. We'll get a few links. So check out the links in the description, guys. There's going to be links for tastings. There's going to be links to the website. There's going to be links for all of the incredible expressions that we've tried today. I think that Krigaliki stood head and shoulders above the rest. Even though all of them were incredible drams, that is a serious winner. I'm going to fight you for one. Um, <laughs> but Joe, thank you so much for giving us a tour of what is coming from this incredible incredible independent brand that you guys have got. Berry Brothers and Rudd, not only a wealth of history, but some seriously exciting stuff up and coming. So uh, all of you stay tuned. Berry Brothers and Rudd, thank you, Joe. You're welcome. Uh, thank you for having me. No, thank you, Joe. At all. You're always welcome back. If you're going to bring stuff that but <laughs> Come back anytime, sir. We'll see oh, you next, next time. next release going to be better bring punch yes. Yeah, you're coming <laughs> back for winter whether you like it or not, mate. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we'll tie you down. Yeah. Listen, guys, keep an eye open for Berry Brothers and Rudd, but also keep an eye open for our next episode here from Uncut and Unfiltered. It's been lovely to have you join us. We will see you next time. Slange of our. Slange of our. Cheers. <laughs> nice one. That was a, a hefty episode. I like that.